Because of Lilith's powers, I heeded her, but deep within me was planted a seed of rebellion, and when she turned her face from me, I opened myself once more to the night and saw infinite possibilities in the stars, and knew a path of power, a path of blood, was mine for the taking. With this newest power, I broke the bonds that the Lady of Night had put on me. I left the damned queen that evening, cloaking myself in shadows. The Book of Nod, The Temptation of Cain. Welcome to Starlight and Smoke, a Vampire the Masquerade Sabbat Chronicle. We are Vorpal Tales, the home of awesome adventures and terrifying tales. If you're hungry for more horror, return here on Thursday for the thrilling culmination of Acid and Ice, our alien campaign, and on Friday for Ravenloft. You can also catch Unknown Armies running before this show on Sunday afternoons. If awesome adventures are what you're looking for, check out Fallout 2020 on Wednesdays and a Star Trek campaign which kicks off on the 22nd. Vorpal Tales is always looking for ways to give back to the various groups that we represent. Let us tell you a little bit about the fantastic group that we've chosen this time to support for the month of July. You might be wondering, why did Vorpal Tales pick Love Your Rebellion for this month's charity? Love Your Rebellion is a nonprofit whose mission we believe in because they employ, discover, assist, and empower minority communities. Those who self-identify as women, immigrants, people of color, people from queer and trans communities, people from low-income communities, and people with disabilities are all included and uplifted through Love Your Rebellion. This is done through music, art, poetry, and literature, promotion, and publications. Attending or taking part in events put on by Love Your Rebellion is an opportunity to connect with who you are, celebrating pride in your identities, supporting intersectionality, learning, and awareness across communities in our beautiful diversity. Love Your Rebellion is obviously putting in the work to better the world and their communities, so Vorpal Tales is doing their small part to help them out. All of July, we'll, we will be taking donations for Love Your Rebellion, and 100% of the donations collected will go to Empower Diversity. Love Your Rebellion is a group that Vorpal Tales is close to in real life. They are fantastic people who do amazing work. We also have a slew of rewards you can buy and a pile of fun things our crew will do as we reach milestones. Please be sure to check them all out at the link that will show up in our chat momentarily. On July 23rd, we will be running a special set of charity one-shots back-to-back. First up will be Blue Rose, run by yours truly, then Extreme Meat Punks Forever, run by Steve. Rewards and milestones are available during all Life Blades, played on the Warple Tales Twitch all month long. Speaking of, thank you to Sag Rules for your very generous donation, which ensures tonight's session will open with some major chaos. Ah. Uh, but yes, <laughs> good for the donation, but ah for the chaos. But before the world blows up, young K Knights, introduce yourselves and your characters to the audience. Hey there, I'm Eric at Maroon Recluse on Twitter, and tonight I will be playing Dimitri. Hey everybody, I am very intimidated by the fact that Zach did all the scary donations. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Everett, my pronouns are they, them. Tonight I shall be playing Billy, whose pronouns are also they, them, the child of Cacophony. No, I have no idea what their lineage exactly is, and... Neither does this universe, apparently, which is kind of awesome. Yeah, hi, I'm Harry, playing Justinian, the Salubri, um, and, oh boy, that's all I gotta say, oh boy. <laughs> Hello, um, my name is Jared, and I'll be playing Drew today, so, yeah, he's got lots of stuff in store, just you wait. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him, and tonight I am playing uh, Nora, uh, pronouns she, her, uh, and she is a La Sombra, and apparently everyone hates her. Except for Billy, who's cool. Yeah, but your sire likes you, and that's what's important. <laughs> And I am Tyler, Eldritch Echoes Online, Possam, bringer of violence and chaos. So to the audience, I say, bring all the chaos. Throw all the chart rolls at us. Bring them all. I dare you to give us five in one session. Go. Oh, good God. 
I, I do have an annotated chart. I have several annotated charts. Uh, all right. With that in mind, uh, Ever, uh, since we missed last session due to the July 4th holiday, would you mind reading the recap and catching everybody up? Absolutely. Oh, uh, there we go. Got it. The pack wakes up in the new haven that was secured by Hosam. Same block, different digs. Better digs, furnished warehouse. Dimitri and Billy awaken with a note in their pockets. Nora is crazy. Hassan knows so much, too much, and who knows about Drew? The Sabbat will only get them all killed. They have to work together if they are to survive. Leave a response in the trash bin by the door. The clock is ticking. Dimitri throws the note away in the wastebasket in the common room. Billy emerges and throws away a similar piece of paper from their journal. It's breakfast time. Hossam points at Isfan. The ghoul promptly leaves to go get breakfast for the pack. Dimitri makes a passing comment about waking up to a note in his pocket. Alerted, Hossam dumps the trash bin revealing the two notes. He gives them a once-over and hands them to Nora. Calling a meeting in the conference room, the pack watches as surveillance videos at the New Haven show Justinian delivering the notes on repeat. Meanwhile, Drew has a talk with Ash's victim, Patricia. She tells him fetters, things that were tied to the ghost from when they were alive. The place where they died things that belong to them. For Patricia, this includes her killer. Theoretically, Patricia says she could take Drew straight to Ash, but she wants something in return. A proper burial, flowers, the whole thing. Ash dumped her body in a park 15 years ago and her mom deserves to know what happened. I don't care how you do it, dig me up and send me home. Drew agrees to do this for her, and Patricia shows him on a map where her body is located. Malibu Creek State Park. He calls Istvan and asks him to go to the park and dig up the body. He warns against this as there's a non-Camaria-aligned vampire snake cult there. Also, the park is crawling with werewolves. In the background, Istvan is heard luring people into a car for $50 a head. Back in the Haven, Nora confronts Justinian and asks Dimitri to light the notes on fire. The bestial part of her is terrified of the fire, but she manages to keep her composure. Billy is upset at Justinian's actions. You don't like us. That's not it, Billy. I like most of you very much. He replies cautiously. Drew calls during the conference and fills them in about the Setites and the werewolves. Justinian calls Nora out, contrasting her intelligence with her bad decisions to trust Sabat leadership. Nora acknowledges the direness of the situation, but counters that these compromises will keep her alive. She warns him to get his shit together and play nice. He refuses to acknowledge her leadership, saying that she's lost to the Sabbat and playing into their hands. Nora taunts Justinian by noting that just because he was with the mob and he's managed to kill a few people recently doesn't mean he can supersede her authority. My dick is bigger than yours. Having heard enough, Justinian moves to grab Nora's face with a flaming touch. She moves to make eye contact and commands him to freeze. Justinian stops for just a moment, enough time for Hassam to intervene and lock eyes with him. Calm, brother, violence will solve nothing. The watchmaker is paralyzed, the way a mouse is when it glimpses the eyes of a snake ready to strike. Billy implores everyone to stop fighting, declaring that they are a family. 
Dimitri looks at the dysfunction and remarks, Da, this is just like a family. Hossam insists that this in issue has to be hashed out through dialogue and asks everyone what they want. Dimitri deflects the question and asks what everyone else wants. Billy wants the pack as a family with no Sabat or Cam Maria. Maybe we run. Everyone, including Nora, agrees that working for the Sabat is a bad idea, but they don't have enough power yet to be free of them. Some of the pack receive an anonymous text message telling them to meet with you know who in their quarters after the meeting. Breakfast arrives. Dimitri offers the two mortals drugs for their party. The pack then proceeds to feed on them. The pack feels relaxed with the drugs flowing through their systems. Just what the doctor ordered, Dimitri said. Justinian, Dimitri, and Billy stagger into Sam's room at different times. He tells them that he doesn't trust the Sabat and realize, reveals that he's a Setite spy on a mission to infiltrate the secret police of the Sabat, the Black Hand. To prove it, he shows them a snake emblem medallion and a large scar on his chest, a wound that was created by his handler who literally took his heart. He supports the notion that Nora is La Sombra and she can't be trusted. Drew will do whatever the Sabat wants as long as he gets magic power over the undead, and that makes him potentially dangerous. Justinian doesn't know if Nora can be brought back from her power trip or if she should be thrown off the boat. Hassam recommends seeing how things play out and then make a move with the rest of the group. They cut the meeting short so as to avoid making Nora suspicious. Nora talks to Istvan before Drew arrives and offers to feed him her blood. Istvan looks away, says that Drew would have to approve. Nora punctures her hand and makes eye contact, imploring him to drink deeply. Unable to resist, he laps at the blood, pulls away, and requests that she break the news to Drew before vacating the Haven. Drew finally arrives at the Haven and asks what the plan is. We're not fighting werewolves, Hossam says. Let's talk to the snake people instead. He makes a call to ensure that they can safely make their way into Malibu. Nora implores the pack to stay together and not split up. Hossam and Billy are in the Bugatti and everyone else is in the van. Arriving at a mansion with plush, Egyptian themed interiors, the pack is led up. The woman waiting for them has a nice business suit on with a dramatic haircut. This is Isya. Hossam gets to the point the pack needs to dig up a body at Malibu Creek, and there are werewolves. He asks what she wants from the pack in return for permission to operate in their territory. She replies that Setite favors are free, or at least the first one is. Dimitri dances around what he actually wants when questioned. Justinian pointedly says that he doesn't want his desires being questioned, and proceeds to show Isya his third eye. She comments that her sire and his are friends, metaphorically speaking. Nora and Drew are escorted out, and Isya speaks with her favorites. She finds Dimitri's circumstances with his sire a special and Billy's voice powers are rare. Hossam tells Nora no deals were made with the weird but oddly hot lady. Mortals will do the work, so that way the pack doesn't have to be present. 
Billy makes the observation that Dimitri appears as human to everyone with aura sight. Nora suggests that he goes to the park by himself with overwatch cover from the others, of course. Dimitri takes the Bugatti, a map, flashlight, and spade. Two wolves and a jackal approach. The jackal changes to a Middle Eastern woman and demands for him to identify herself or himself. When he does, she replies with, I smell the worm on you. Dimitri assures the woman that he doesn't serve the worm, but the weaver. After this, she demands to know his lineage. Anansi. Oh fuck, get out of here, she says, moving to escort him and the cadaver out of the park. Just then, the van and the Bugatti explode into flames. Thank you for that. Now, uh, the chaos that Zach rules bought will require a little bit of a retcon. Uh, your cars have all still blown up. The Elder Gods were summoned to make that happen, so there's no getting around that. But the park turns out to be inhabited by more than just werewolves and canines. And since we have an anonymous donor who has purchased a minor role on the chart of chaos, could someone please roll me a d14? Sure. Let's see. Ten. Okay. All right. Okay, I did some very weird copy pasting. Neat. Okay. Uh, Patty also just gave you a major chaos roll. It's coming now. <laughs> okay, Total we'll of five, we're at three. Oh, God. What? Patty, you're the best. We love What is right. happening? Uh, so I'm going to need a d12 roll from someone else, please. Here, I'll do it. Yeah, I can... Seven. I demand that that roll affect Eric exclusively. Uh, you gonna you gonna contribute? You mean to like it isn't already to make that happen? No. Oh. <laughs> what was that major chaos roll? Seven. Oh goody. You know what that, is. <laughs> that does not sound good at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's fine. Uh, I can edit that into what's currently about to happen. Uh, okay. Okay. So, to set the scene, uh, Dimitri, you have a burlap sack, am I correct? More than likely, yeah. Yeah, full of, uh, you know, the remains of a woman who was killed by a vampire like 15, 16 years ago. So, you know, mostly bones by this point. Mm. Uh, and you were walking towards the rest of your pack uh, when the cars explode. And as they explode, uh, so what happens is you hear something or you feel something hit you like right between your shoulder blades. Dead Whoa. center. It doesn't hurt, but you feel it. And it happens two more times. And you hear a voice call it from behind you. Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you turn around, and you see a guy dressed up like Straight up, Ian McKellen, like big gray canvas robes, and like he's got a beard that's like it looks like white wool felt. So like a couple degrees of quality above a cotton ball beard. Uh, Boy. and he has thrown beanbags at you, 
little blue bean bags, and one of them has broken open and has spilled bird seed onto the ground. <laughs> says, hey man, I hit you three times with lightning bolt. You have to call a defense. Oh shit, I fucked up my saving throw. Oh! <laughs> and then I run. <laughs> okay. So, you you start running, and then cutting you off from the path is uh, two other mortals. Uh, one of them is wearing what looks like a uh, paint. No, actually, there's three mortals. One of them is wearing what looks like a uh, painted on, like painted plastic armor. Oh. And there's someone else who looks like they're going for like a Lon Chaney Jr. effect, but like not with actual fur, just with face makeup. And there's a oh. uh, a third person dressed all in black uh so jeans black tank top kind of like this like tactical vest thing going on but they've also got a white headband on that's a little discordant okay. and weird also uh, i i know you saw uh tony's had he also just gave you a five thousand point chaos too so oh my god fifteen thousand points worth of summoning the elder gods <laughs> plus the chaos rules <laughs> All right. Let's deal with what's happening right now. <laughs> and so Jesus all of God. you are close enough to see Dimitri get cut off by these other three people. <laughs> That's Lon Chaney, Plastic Armor. Junior. Junior, sorry. Yes. It's, it's a LARP, Dimitri, the most dangerous foe of all. <laughs> most game, dangerous game of all Jesus, time. Jesus, run. <laughs> Why are they doing this in the middle of the night? <laughs> Clearly you've That's never time. vampire LARPed. I'm, Apparently I'm, not. I'm sorry, what the fuck are you all talking about? Our cars exploded and you're- what, It's what? a live action role playing game. So are, are you having this conversation in character? I, I'm, I am. I'm lost. I'm <laughs> like, what the f- What is, the actual fuck is happening right now? <laughs> uh, I don't so, know. So the person in black walks up to you and like, Hi, are you here for the Living Realms game? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. That's why, yes. Look, that's why we're dressed like this. Absolutely. Hundred yeah. uh, percent. You like our special oh. effects with the cars? Oh shit! Right. There are cars on fire. <laughs> uh yeah. So uh, you see the person in black bring out a uh, walkie-talkie, and it's like, oh my god, someone call Ranger Joe. I think there's a fire in the hills. Who the fuck is Ranger Joe? He's the ranger who like takes care of. He's the park ranger. Oh, uh, shit, man! This is like a really bad introduction. Oh, shit. are we gonna have to evacuate the park? Yeah, you, you may want to go now. Billy will yeah. tug on Hassan's sleeve and and uh, sign. What's he saying? I will. Uh, I will answer back that uh, they're having a nerd party here and they think we're part of it. Billy just will. But if you can read body language from my sign language, the nerd part is not like derogatory. It's more like, this is cool. <laughs> oh, Hassam is secretly a fan of LARPing. <laughs> how do you know Hassam didn't LARP when he was alive? <gasps> Maybe that's how his sire found him. Oh God. <laughs> it's all, all right. coming together now. Nora, you might want to. Uh, I, I whisper this. You might want to do that thing you do with your eyes. Yeah. This kid. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. I'll be like. Um. Hold on. I think you're forgetting something. Um. And I'll draw his attention to me. Okay. Uh. Yeah. He he looks up and he's like, God damn it! We were working on this plot for three fucking months. Uh. Yeah. How can I help you? Hi. So, and I'll lock eyes with them. Mm -hmm. Um. I have dominate three now. I don't have my powers pulled up in front of me. I apologize. But uh, I want to look at it and just go about calling. Uh. You don't need to call the ranger. You were just kidding. Okay. Uh. Go ahead and make a roll for that, just in case you botch. Okay. Uh, what do? We, what would you? What would you like it to be? Uh, so I believe dominate. Uh, 
you know, you, you'd think that I would be smart and open up all the books ahead of time, which I and did. Adobe just you, crashes. And you then, don't have to Zoom worry. crashing this time. Uh, you just, don't have so, to worry at all because matter. Spank oh. My Betty. Okay. Thank just you, Spank My get, Betty. Crit. Well, I don't know if you'd be thanking him. Fail. Them, but uh, that's a botch. Oh God! Uh, all right. Uh, and so you you lock eyes with this gentleman, and you feel some outward malign influence hmm. exerting their will upon yours. Uh, <laughs> I see. And the guy looks at him like, "What? No, this is this is wildfire season. We gotta take this shit seriously." Uh, and like turns to start walking away and is like hey we got some newbies and we might need to evacuate uh, into the walkie talkie look at Nora want me to kill him <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea what kind of insane shit is that want you to kill him of course not why not <laughs> you can't just kill some rando <laughs> yeah, I can. I've done it a I lot. Mean, like a lot. Well, yeah, you can, but you shouldn't. I mean, I feel like there's better ways to resolve this. I'm also... Okay. Just tried. Okay. So, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Okay. The repercussions that oh. this could help have on us as well. So, storyteller on. hint. Yes, you can definitely kill this guy. What are you going to do about the other 50 LARPers in the park? Yeah. <laughs> Blame it on... That's Justinian's werewolves. problem. <laughs> Blame it the, on Dungeons and the Dragons. Werewolves, the werewolves have dipped out, right? Or are they still watching uh, us? So you think about... Oh, god damn it. Uh, Spank My Betty has redeemed Harry Chooses Violence. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to choose violence. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. How does... does do so, I have to I'm do that sorry. immediately? Yes, it's supposed to be in the same scene. Oh, uh, shit. And I was halfway through answering a question that I now forget what the question was. Are the werewolves still present? Yes. Oh, yes. So you think about that, and you look up, and in like some of those d more distant stands of live oaks, uh, you see little red eyes glinting out of the shadows, watching you. Yes, that's a no. Almost like we rolled a seven on the chart of chaos. Um, well, I was going to try to do something else, but what happens with this choosing violence? Um, do I see the glinting of the uh, creatures? Uh, their eyes. Yeah, I gave that to Nora. I'll give it to you too. Ah! And I'll shoot at them. <laughs> okay. Oh, good Lord. Go ahead and give me dexterity plus firearms, please. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh, here Look we go. Thursday Let's see. Good, it. Big numbers, baby. Big numbers. One success. Okay. Go ahead and roll three dice, please. Alrighty. Uh, for damage. Uh, oh, two tens there. So is that four or are we exploding them? Uh, They just count for two. Okay, so that's four successes then. All right, so uh, from everyone's perspective, you're having a conversation on a dirt oak lined road with a couple of mortals when all of a sudden Justinian just whips out a firearm and fires into the trees. Uh, at which point uh, the guy in black, the wizard looking dude and the person in painted armor was like, holy shit, what the fuck? Grab uh, him. And ah. so, immediately, the guy starts screaming into his walkie-talkie, Call the cops! Call the cops! No, I, we were, no! No! We're, no, oh, no, we're, no. I, I yelled, grab him, and I'm hoping me, Hassan, and someone else will grab, I, especially the walkie-talkie. I'm gonna jump for the walkie-talkie before he can even say that. If... Alright, I, I will let one more person act, and then it's initiative. Could be me. Okay. Because Justinian yeah. already did, and I'm the warrior. Okay. But you can if you really want, Drew. That's Tyler talking to Jared. 
your call. Um, no, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I don't want you to kill him, but you're probably gonna kill him. Nope. Yeah, no, you're got you got a higher success rate. We got to get out of here. I'm not gonna kill him, but I am gonna activate celerity. Cool. Probably yeah, wise. Yeah, you would definitely do that. And <laughs> tackle him and tackle him and punch him in the face real fast twice for nine bashing. I just want to disable him, not to kill him. Nine okay. bashing. Jeez. He is Divide disabled. Probably out a couple teeth. Uh, <laughs> the me. other two, the other two people, uh, are freak out. They start running back towards a different stand of trees. Uh, those of you with really good eyesight can see like there are like some other people milling around. Uh, and yet you do crush the walkie-talkie in your hand. Oh, that guy's gonna have a headache when you wake up. Well, that one was louder than I thought. Steve, I'd have warned you. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the ambience and the action music are very different level. <laughs> All right. So what would you like to do next? Oh, Jesus. Um... So Hassan has this mortal in his arms, like bleeding from his mouth and like barely holding on to consciousness. Be like, I don't know, man. Just take whatever you want. We're just nerds. We just want to be here. Enjoy the park. I toss the walkie-talkie to Drew. I take it. Okay. Um. I'm going to go over the walkie-talkie and just say... I guess that everyone needs to evacuate. We're fine here. Everything's fine. Everything's great. That How too. are you? Yeah, yeah I'm going to do that. Everything's fine here. I just lightning bolted this guy right here. <laughs> Wait. Who is this? Where's Fox? Uh, he's just taking a nap right now. He got, like, really tired earlier, and... Yeah. We're Can running I... a goddamn game. He knows better. He uh, had, like, three Dr. Peppers earlier today. What the fuck is he doing having a nap? He must... Oh, he... Wake him <laughs> up! No, Drew, Drew, Drew. Give me the, give me the walkie-talkie. Drew. I hand the walkie-talkie over to Nora. And then I'm gonna give it to Billy. Billy? Yes? You're him now. I'm him? Yes. Okay. Tell them, ha, we got you idiots good. How'd you like those special effects? So Billy takes a moment and goes, ha, we got you idiots good. How'd you like those special effects? Okay, is there any role that you need for this discipline? So I am uh, trying to get to that section of the rule book. So are, are you using Nelpomony or just a uh, uh, skill? I was thinking some something along the lines of Melpomene and maybe performance to imitate voices. So, or expression. how much do you have in Melpomene? Two. Mimic is not a thing at two, but yeah, like you can still try to do it as Billy. It's a thing Billy yeah. does. Yeah, go ahead and give me a charisma plus performance. Ooh, charisma plus performance. Or, no, charisma's not a thing in this system. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it is. It is. Social. Oh, it is. Okay, never mind. I am so confused tonight. It's all the chaos. <laughs> hey, I blame the there's chaos. a lot happening in this right now. <laughs> okay. Like a lot of it got injected. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay, uh, two nines and a ten. I'm going to reroll a die. Uh, tens just count for two straight up. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. So that'd be four successes? Yes, indeed. All right. So, yeah, so you grab the walkie-talkie, just based on the brief uh, 
uh, conversation that you've overheard with Fox, uh, you do manage to render what is a convincing uh, uh, mimicry of his voice. Like, haha, we got you good. And so you hear, like, God damn it, Fox, we're having problems with the foam golem. Get back here, we need help. With the what? Foam um, golem. golem? Foam. Oh, foam. Oh. Sounds like a nasty monster. I, I leave it up to Billy. Billy will here in a minute. take a, another second and then go, yeah, yeah, we'll be there soon. Okay. Uh, there, there is no response, but you get the idea it's because of the people on the other end are probably busy with whatever foam golem is. <laughs> that definitely won't come back at any point. <laughs> That's definitely not a setup for a payoff later. So Billy will hand back the walkie-talkie and go, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God, Billy. Uh, I roll... Thank you. I roll the punched guy over. Does he have his wallet on him? Uh, he does. I take his wallet. Okay. Make sure you get his keys. That's it, just taking his wallet. Uh, just kind of flip through, grab his ID. All right. Uh, you also get what look like a bunch of blank business cards. Oh. Uh, but it says uh, item card on the top, and then date and storyteller at the bottom. Mm. For no reason, I feel like I should pocket these. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> you should write Vorpal Sword on one and give it back to him. Yeah. What I'm going to do Don't. is... Um, I'm going to take, like, him, and I want to, like, adjust him to put him where the lowest branch is, so that way, if, when his friends come find him, obviously, he's knocked out, that he ran and wasn't paying attention, swatted his head on a branch, and knocked himself out when he was running to go. I'm still holding him. Who says I'm letting you take him? I'm just saying. This is easy right. food when my turn comes around again. Uh, well, we we are not oh. quite in rounds yet. Uh, oh, so well you, then, you yeah, have... I bit his ass and took a blood point. After that, I'll drop him on the ground and Drew can do what he wants. But well, why'd you bite his <laughs> ass? Is that where he <laughs> fell, Billy? There's there's a vein there. It's a big one. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. All right. R ruin this poor hardworking storyteller's favorite pair of jeans by poking holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I recovered the blood I used to knock him out and then drew the good blood. Okay, so it'll take about a minute or so for you to reposition the body, at which point uh, you start hearing a little more commotion. because yeah, there what were about those red eyes we shot at? So there were two other mortals who ran away mm -hmm. uh, after seeing Justinian shoot somebody. Right. Uh, you can see the distant silhouette of your burning cars. Not that distant. It's it's not that far away. Just hilly. There is. Uh, oh, what would you like to do? Um, I'm actually gonna go back to the body and see if he's got any car keys. Sure. Yep. Uh, you know what? Roll me a d100. Ooh, I get to use my big ball of fortune. Okay. Hello. Ooh, I got a 95. Uh, that's cool, because if you'd rolled low, that would have meant his car keys were in his tent. Oh, On a 95, God. they are in his pocket. Sweet. I go up to guys. We got a car. <laughs> but did the keys denote what the car is? Uh, it is a Toyota Corolla key? That's all you okay. know. That, that'll help, at least. Great. You found us a 2002 Toyota Corolla. Better than walking. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go find where these nerds parked. It's less conspicuous than like a Bugatti in a van. Yeah, they're pretty conspicuous right now, Justinian. Yeah. All right. You just got to get out of here at this point. Literally. All right. Yeah. Let's go so, find wherever the park's actual parking lot is. Yeah. So you run around uh, one of the curves in the dirt road and you see 
four lines of slightly dusty parked cars. Looks like there's about 20 cars here, all told. How many Toyota Corollas? There are five. Does it have a key fob? Nope. Damn it. Oh, okay. I guess we gotta try it. How many of the one. Toyota Corollas are pre key fob? Two. Hey, that helped. Okay, Let's go. I'll pretend to be drunk and try to, like, that way if someone sees us trying to get into their car. Oh, wait, but then I'll, it'll look like I'm going to drunk drive, and then I'll definitely get in trouble, so never mind. <laughs> just just run. Yeah, just just, just do it at this point. There's, yeah. We've, okay. we have, yeah. Yeah, just I we'll think fucking stealing, car. stealing yeah. a decade-old Toyota Corolla is going to be the least. They couldn't even get you on like, Grand Theft. Right. It would be like $30. <laughs> All right, so uh, it's probably going to be like you need it more than I do. Five thousand miles on it already. On All the right. second engine. <laughs> so uh, Justinian goes for uh, to try and unlock one of the Toyotas, and then Sam is like, "No, no, not that one. Uh, either that one or that one." Uh, and within a round or two, you do manage to open the storyteller's car, which he worked very hard for, by the way. Uh, <laughs> So, who is driving? Um, who has I would say anybody, just jump in. <laughs> I'm trained in it. If that matters, I'll do it. Or when the werewolves attack us. I was going to say, because we're definitely getting attacked in this car, so... Yeah. I've got, got two How many dice, dots you a, got in drive, yeah, Justin, Ian, or Dimitri? None. I got zero. You got any, Dimitri? I got two. We're tied. I drive a lot. Dimitri can drive. I was going to say, put Dimitri at the wheel so you can shoot whatever's coming for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Driving Miss Daisy. Here we go. All right. Miss so, Nora. <laughs> I like it. You pile into the I car. Am not amused by this reference. Dimitri at the wheel. Uh, and so. <laughs> He's riding Superman. <laughs> it's true. So There's you managed to us. get. Uh, somewhat far away from the group campsite and the LARPers. Uh, but as you round one of the many curves in this curvy mountain road, uh, you see like three or four big buff guys in the middle of the road. They're like man-wolf. It wouldn't be the uh, local hairy bodybuilder convention uh, in the park today, would it? Oh, no, like, full-on, like, wolf ears Son and big clawed oh, paws. Oh. Like, their hands are paws, not hands. Hey, Dimitri. Go the other way. <laughs> I'm on oh, the other bus. way will take you right back to camp. Forest is probably safer than that. Uh, what the werewolves like to go through 50 LARPers to get to us, or would they like to just get to us uh, on the side of the road? I mean, they look really mad. Oh, man. These three buff guys in the road? Three, three buff, buff yeah. wolfmen in the road. Yeah. Nine yeah. Feet to foot tall wolfmen. <sighs> you want me to go back to the park? <laughs> I don't think we're going through those. No, no. <laughs> okay. So All right. Three werewolves. Throw it in reverse. <laughs> so yeah, three werewolves or fifty nerds. What's the? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Take the nerds any day. <laughs> Cut through the park. <laughs> yep. Back to the park. Yep. Bye. <laughs> Go back to the park. <laughs> We're sorry about whatever we did to you. All right. Well, one of us shot him. <laughs> looking yeah. at Justinian. Somebody, somebody kicked just. No, I'm kidding. I don't know what came over me. It's like a voice from God told me to. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna make three rolls for no reason whatsoever. Oh, good Lord. oh, oh no! Oh Time no! To buckle oh no! Up. Uh, spank my Betty just chose Harry Jesus violence. Fuck again. you, spank my Betty. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. I, I, I know, like you were gonna do I, anything else. No, I was gonna allow us to get away without worrying. Instead, now I have to shoot at these fucking werewolves. No, no, no. I... You could shoot at the LARPers. I'm not shooting the LARPers! 
You said you'd take the nerds over the werewolves any day. <laughs> I'll shoot at them as we flee. I I really uh, appreciate how many channel points Spank my Betty has saved up for this. <laughs> All right. So what happens is, uh, Dimitri, you back up and you try to reverse or do a U-turn, but again, like narrow mountain road, so it's really difficult to maneuver. And in the time it takes you to flip around, uh, two of the werewolves leap and land on top of the car, one of whom punches out the passenger window and will begin to try and claw whoever is in the passenger seat. I look at him and I say, he did it, pointing at Justinian. <laughs> I will shoot at the werewolf. All right, so That's at me in this the passenger point, seat. at this point, initiative, please. Oh, God. Oh, my Lord. So, I don't know if anyone saw it in the Discord, but I said Billy opted for the trunk. <laughs> okay, uh, so you can still uh, do initiative because there still might be stuff you can do from within the trunk. Yeah, like it smashed around when the car starts spinning. Um, question. An initiative is dex plus percent. So you add your dots and dex and your dots and wits together, and then gotcha. whatever that number is, you add that to the roll of 1d10. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Dimitri, what you get? I got a 13. Okay. And I'm not trying to do like three point like reverse. I'm just like, oh no, throwing it in reverse, like full pedal to the metal. Like, okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, gotta hit that just, J turn. Justinian, how much you get? I got a 10 for initiative. And Billy? Nine. How about Nora? A nine. Everybody's going on nine. All right. Uh, true. I got a four. You forgot me. I'm working my way up. Oh, I thought you were giving him his action. Billy. No, I'm just getting initiative right now. Uh, you got a 14? Okay. Sam, how much did you get? What's the question, Steve? Sorry. No. Billy, you rolled a nine. Like. I, I rolled my physical die and I, I oh, typed okay. it out in Astral, sorry. Oh, okay. Got it. 18. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, Sam goes first. Yeah. I feel like spanking my Betty has earned us doing some nonsense cool shit with all of their punishment. So I engaged Celerity again and now I'm also outside the car on the trunk. Okay, were you in the passenger seat? I was. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me a dex athletics roll, please. You had a six dex with blood points, generation nine, or is that generation eight? I don't remember. When does that move to six? Uh, I will look that up. had everything nice and open and then my computer was just oh I forgot that I hated you I think they put the chart next to the generation background doesn't matter even with my current level critical success <laughs> Okay, cool. So, uh, you do manage to whip out of the passenger side, and now you're on the car. Uh, well, Dimitri, we'll just say that you have, uh, pointed your hood back towards LARP camp. Okay. All right. Uh, Drew, you're up. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing much I can do. I don't have a gun anymore. <laughs> Um. So one thing you could do is try and maneuver into the seat. <clears throat> Excuse me, the seat the Sam has just vacated, and try and like pull one of them off the car. Oh, they're both. I thought only one was on there. 
Okay. Um. Then, yeah. So is the other werewolf on top of the car, or is it on the hood of the car? Uh, there are two werewolves on the very top of the car, one of whom punched out the passenger side door or window, uh, trying to get at Sam, but Sam managed to maneuver around, duck that werewolf, and land on the hood. Gotcha. Trunk. Okay, so, yeah, oh, I'm trunk, going okay. to try to kind of rip, um... I'm gonna try to do it, <laughs> but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to actually can I try to cut the supports of of the roof, and so that way the roof just goes with it with the uh, with the werewolf. Or uh, how much potence do you have? Oh god. Potence. Because you would need uh like a chemical torch to yeah. take the car roof off other roof off otherwise. Okay. I really want to make a joke about then yeah, I'm just gonna try <laughs> to go to Corolla right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just try to muscle him off. It's probably gonna fail miserably, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, okay, go ahead and give me a uh, strength plus brawl or athletics, whichever one you have better. Oh God, this is gonna be one dice. True. <laughs> Actually, can I spend a willpower just to get a success? <laughs> That's probably a really good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I would spend a willpower, and then should I uh, roll it anyways, just to see? Yes, please. Oh, good uh, Boom. Oh, I got one. I did, so I got two. Okay, so with two successes, uh, roll this guy's counter. Okay, with two successes, you do manage to grab onto his leg and sort of pull him off the car and into the dirt uh, road below. You don't do any damage, uh, but he's not on the car anymore. Okay, uh, Dimitri. Is the one that attacked uh, Hosam still there, like on the on the hood or whatever, the car? Uh, we'll say that the one who attacked Hassan is the one that Drew tried to pull off because he was going through the passenger side door. Ah, okay. So now there's just the one other one or is it two other ones? Uh, so there is one who's sort of chasing you. Ah. Uh, and then there is another one on top of the trunk. And then one who just got thrown into the dirt. Okay, so Hassan's oh. well, dealing with the one that's on the trunk, I imagine. All right. So I feel um, like I should point out to Ever real quick. Can't do those when you're in the game. But I feel like the Furio <laughs> one should count anyways. <laughs> it's okay. I, I want to try to just lose the other one if possible. I don't. I, I know it's probably not possible to outrun of the werewolf, <laughs> but I just want to gun it as fast as I can into the park, uh, and just put as much distance as, as I can between us and them. All right, uh, so go ahead and give me a uh, dex plus drive. I'll also let you do wits plus drive because as you drive deeper into the park, uh, so the way that Malibu Creek State Park is, is there's a very flat field and then it starts leading uphill. And so you see a bunch of people in costumes milling about on the very flat field. And then as you start to go uphill is when you encounter like a whole bunch of tents and some barbecue grills and some uh, what look like bathrooms. Um, I, I uh, yeah. I'm gonna, uh, I I didn't make it. <laughs> I I usually spend a willpower when I'm being chased by werewolves, so I didn't 
completely botched, but I got zero. Okay, zero successes, but a willpower? Uh, I spent the willpower, so, and then, like, I got a minus okay. one, so I think that counts as, zero, as a zero. Uh, as long as you spent the willpower, you always get at least one success. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah, it's it's a really nice bulwark against uh, utter disaster. <laughs> All right, so uh, you do plow into a couple tents, and you clip someone uh, on the side of the hip. Uh, they start screaming. Uh, they're probably in for you know a lifetime of uh, rehabilitation and stuff. Can I but... can I intercede really quick? Yes. The person that gets clipped. What the actual fuck is going on here? I'm coming out here. I take a fucking break from fucking Chicago. I take a break from fucking <laughs> Jersey. I come out here. I meet some fucking people. They tell me come play in the fucking woods. Play a little bit of dress up. Kill some monsters. Throw some fucking lightning bolts. And you fucking drive a car through my fucking dinner. You fucking fuck you. Fuck you. If I had my fucking sword, I'd cut you in half right now. Fucking dicks. <laughs> Get fucking fucked! So Nora has an episode. Sam's not and having an episode. That's just like being from New York. As, as the car goes, as the car goes by, Sam engages you in a Jersey fuck you contest. Fuck you! No, fuck you! <laughs> from from the back, from the hood, from the trunk. All right. So that's Dimitri's turn. Justinian, what are you? What would you like to do? Are there any visible werewolves? Yes, there is one still on top of the car, and two more are chasing you. Uh, but they are sort of now drawn up into the chaos of the Larpers being like, "What the fuck?" Because uh, this was not what was in the game script for tonight. <laughs> Yeah, it certainly isn't. Um, I am going to try and just scare them off by just shooting uh, in the air. Uh, you have been bribed with bits to choose violence. Okay, um, how violent are we getting? Uh, that, that's fuck. up to you. I, just I don't want to kill these people. Uh, you know what I'll do? You can shoot that motherfucker's cursing at you. There is yeah. still a werewolf on the roof of the oh, car. Yeah, then I'll just straight through the roof of the car. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Uh, Dex plus firearms, please. I am not good at this. Well, I'm okay at it. Uh, two successes. Okay. So, you fire up and, you know, boom, boom, and you hear uh, a yelping like, ho, ho! And, I get fucked. Uh, it falls off the car. And so, uh, because someone uh, has decided to, let me double check, that it is a banishing of the Elder Gods, what you see happen is the woman who was confronting Dimitri earlier, uh, who turned into a jackal, she shows up with the two other wolves who were flanking her, uh, is yelling something about you goddamn pretentious hammer film motherfuckers and starts attacking the werewolves who were on your car and in the oh. chaos that ensues you can get away what the f so the nerds <laughs> fought the werewolves for us oh my god oh. Thank you. No, that was the other werewolves. Yeah, it was the oh, other yeah. werewolves. The, other the, one, the ones that let us go originally. Apparently, they hate these uh, hammer film werewolves more than they hate you. Love it. Fuck is a hammer fill. Oh, beautiful. I'm sorry, you're studying what, Harry? <laughs> history. I'm we'll not have... an expert on all history. Fuck you. <laughs> we'll have that discussion later. I feel like I'm going to look this up and then I'm going to be an idiot and know what it is. Are you, you familiar will. with Bella Lugosi? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
If you if you Google Hammer Films, you'll be like, oh, oh. films. I thought you said ham. Yeah, I know what a fuck a Hammer film is. I thought you said <laughs> Hammer Phil, and I was like, is that just like a landfill that you only put hammers only in? Only put hammers. <laughs> oh my no, the, god. Hammer uh, time. Really? Chaos but... chart roll that Rachel rolled. That I rolled specifically summons Hammer vampires and Hammer werewolves into the scene. What? Okay. That's yes. Why, uh, now we now we have punches. to enlighten Jared on what Hammer Films is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's classic horror films. Yeah, yeah. I just I got it. Okay. So, Dimitri, you are driving through the live oak wilderness. You scare a couple stands of deer away. You eventually make it out into the highway. In your stolen Corolla. I get back in the car. Oh. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, not before I kick what remains of the windshield out of the way. Okay, Drew, crew, where are we going? Oh. Honestly, I want to fucking go home right now. Pretty sure we pulled over here to regroup, but I don't remember why, Nora. It's been a long goddamn night. Yeah. It mm -hmm. has been. <sighs> Very much. So, well... Jesus, what were we doing? As long as we got, as long as we got the remains, we should be okay. Oh right, um, the remains. We, I gotta do. I gotta. We got. I gotta talk to the ghost, anyways, and uh, she'll take us to where we need to go. So, I thought we were returning the remains to. Well, we got to do that first. Yes. Yeah, that is what's. Okay, so we so can't that... go home. So we Hold can't on. go home just yet because I'm not really wanting to bring these remains back to the Haven. Hold Agreed. on. Was the body in the car when it blew up? Uh, no. Dimitri had the remains in a bag okay, that he fuck. was holding. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm presuming... So is it in the trunk with Billy? Probably. Oh, that's fun. Sorry, Billy. Unless oh, Dimitri's... Yeah. yeah, you're driving, so... We have to make room for all these people. I have to put that body in, in the trunk. You know how this works. That thing is safe. <laughs> body, too. <laughs> That's good. Well, um, I think we should just drop, no, drop these uh, right off at the doorstep. Just random ass bones. It's not a goddamn Amazon package. Uh, so Patricia, who has been following you, she's like, my mom lives in Missouri, asshole. Oh my God. Well, what, do you want us you to- You couldn't oh, have told us, I, I, I look over to the ghost, you couldn't have told us that earlier? You didn't what, ask. What is she? What is she saying? What's going on? Her mom lives in Missouri. Oh, so yeah, we're we're going fucking home. Yeah, we're going oh. home. If she could give us a sh an address, we can ship it. I was gonna say we could just get get a flat rate U.S. mail package for the hundred percent. That's a great oh. idea. All right, so <laughs> my mom gets a box in the mail, doesn't know who it is because I'm pretty sure you're not gonna put a return address. She opens it up and finds what. Her daughter's bones? Well, what, what the, the fu fuck, dude? <laughs> there are channels for this. I heard none of that. But right, we can't hear say, this. But I look, <laughs> yeah. at Drew, oh, yeah. I look at Drew anyways, probably while she's still yelling at you. And I'm like, just get your ghoul to do it. I'm sure he knows how to deal with this sort of thing. Sure, yeah, agreed. We, that's what we'll do. Mm. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have Isfahn... I'll, I gotta talk to Isfan later that night anyway. Uh, later tonight anyway, so, yeah. I'll talk to him then about it. That's what I'll do. Wait, hold on. We're, we're getting this body for somebody, aren't we? No. So, uh, for me? I ignore her. And my mom. <laughs> my mom is the main character here. Let's not forget that. So what's what's our purpose of getting this body again, Drew? How does this help thing us? Thing is, is the ghost knows exactly where Ash is. Got it. All right. Okay, understood. The gap. Literally, she can take us straight to where that person is. Okay. But in order for us to do it, she we have to her... give her remains to her mom. Understood. Yeah, we are doing burial. it for someone. We're doing it for the ghost. Yes. Ghost it sounds fucking too. crazy, but werewolves are werewolves exist. So. Yeah. 
you know that 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 doesn't become weird once I turned into a literal fucking vampire. Yeah, like Dimitri had a really weird conversation with that werewolf. <sighs> yeah, I kind of feel like dead things should stick together. You should be less of a dick to your ghosts, bro. Crying. You're cool with me, ghost person. Crying. Looking up at the ceiling. All right. Yeah, whatever. All you leeches are the same. You'd have killed me too if I'd gotten close to you. You know what? I'm trying here. Communication is like a two way thing, and you just see me arguing with nothing. Like, you really, <laughs> that's all you've done is just brag on me and tell me I'm doing a terrible fucking job. All right. I'm doing this for you. So, why don't you say, give me just all I'm asking is for a thank you. All right. You hear I Billy will. from the trunk. Thank go. you when I finally have a goddamn headstone. Well, you want to know what? I'm fucking working on it. Hey, no backseat driving, okay? <laughs> Dimitri. Anansi. That's like a spider thing, right? And I that's just like a thing you. you probably didn't hear because that's the one. Oh, the one no, that was over the comms. Yeah, yeah but that was over the comms. Microphones worked out. We, we specifically said that was open on the we comms. Were using cell yeah. Phones. Well, we had earpieces. Yep. We went out of our way to make sure that we heard that. Spider Man. Spider Man. Does Can I spend like 500 can. chaos points to retcon that? That would mean a lot more than 500. <laughs> okay, uh, he just plays dumb as usually. He's like, oh. I, I, I would allow uh, perhaps for a major chaos roll to affect the plot in that direction, depending on the roll. Custom rolls to the audience cost 30 to $50, depending on what the GM wants you to do. It costs 50 to specifically summon bug to multiple games, for instance. Oh, oh God, bug, yes. If someone summons bug to this game, it will be the best thing to ever happen. On oh, no. Game. It no, was already scheduled. It would be so and bad. Please, no. It was specifically scheduled away from this one. A, a small child in the middle of hyperviolent vampires is a very bad idea. I feel like bug Especially would be the what, to everybody. Uh, uh, given what Bug acquired in Ravenloft. <laughs> oh, Bug's in Raven. Oh my gosh, what Bug happened? was in Ravenloft. This Bug week, was in Ravenloft. <laughs> this week, Bug is appearing in Fallout and Ravenloft. Yes. Wow. It ever. Appearing is a loose term, <laughs> but you'll find out when we hit uh, Fallout again. It's going to be. Oh, it is Fallout, though, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's Fallout and Ravenloft this week, and then Star Trek next week, and uh, Deadlands. Okay. Let's just all get back to the Haven. Sound like a good plan? Agreed. Oh. Good. We'll all right. just all sit in silence, reflect on our evening. Drew, if you could argue with your ghost quietly, that would be appreciated. Na 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 ghost phone. Sonora says that, and uh, Patricia is like, <laughs> I'm damn glad she can't order me around. Anyway, just to clarify, Mr. Mortician, uh, you are not doing this for me. You are not doing it out of the goodness of your heart. This is a business transaction. I understand that, but I'm not Drew? Da, 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 da. Mm. Quietly. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if I was human right now, I'd have a really bad headache. I just want you all to know that. I mean, you you say that, and then your other ghost friend pipes up. You're like, yeah, it'd be real cool if some of us could still have headaches. <laughs> so, poor Drew is getting heckled all the way back to the Haven. I turn on some K-pop. <laughs> okay. Uh, you arrive at the Haven. Nothing bad has happened to it yet. Uh, you have a bag full of moldering human bones. What would you like to do next? That's a dream Time thing. I think we should just send it UPS. <laughs> what time is it? Uh, I'm gonna say it's about two hours till dawn. You've had a very busy night. Good luck with your ghoul, no. Drew, and then my door slams shut. 
No. Okay. okay. So this is what I'm going to do. How many hours do I have till dawn? Two. Two. Uh, I'm going to. Where's the nearest, like, I guess, park of some sort? Or, like, just. I know, like, uh, not park, but, like, um, one of those court. Uh, I can't remember what they're called. Not courtrooms, but like a courtyard. Duh, courtyard. Yeah. Is there so any type of courtyard nearby? There are a bunch of like really tiny parks all throughout the city. Just like they're like a quarter acre and have like uh, a volleyball court and some playground equipment. Like a place for your dog to run around. Okay. I'm going to put that shit right in the playground. Somebody just redeemed minor bad luck on you. It's not minor, it's specific to his character. It's at the same level as the 5,000.1 Rachel, but single target, not the whole group. <laughs> oh my <Okay>. god. <laughs> wow. You guys are vicious. God damn. What is, so out of character, what Harry, is study the forbidden tome? <clears throat> that's what I just said. That's oh. the one where it's a single target, really bad luck. <laughs> you guys hate me, man. So Harry, you may have missed this, but this is actually Rachel's fault. Because when the charity started, she made a comment about, I'm really glad we're not playing this week. So everyone said, yeah, we'll come for you when you play next. <laughs> it's happening. It's it's great. Uh, is that the word you want to use? I think it's cool. I mean, yeah. it's people are getting the charity. Two, you should see what happened to Alien two weeks in a row. It was awesome. All right. So... Uh, true. When you went to go drop Patricia's remains off, uh, there's no getting out of it now, but did you go alone? <laughs> um, be honest. Like 15 people told you to take your ghoul. Pretty much, yeah, that's probably what I would do. I'd, I'd definitely take his fond. He'd be, do he'd be doing the shoveling 100%. Okay, so, uh, mm. you take Istvan. Uh, so you call up Istvan, uh, and it takes a couple rings. Pal is doing something weird. Say shoveling. Did you really just unbury this lady <laughs> so you could rebury her and no one will find her again? Oh, no, 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 no. No, he's going to no. bury her in the fucking sand uh, pit right, where so the kids play. Yeah, where <laughs> six-year-olds play. Not better. <laughs> cool. Well, she's going to be found, all right? <laughs> Make your couple do it. It's too late now. Good luck, kid. Okay. All right. Drew, this is your so, scene, man. Take it. <laughs> this is amazing. No. <laughs> this is bad. Okay. Eddie, we don't need critical fails from you. <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> Drew thought that this was going to be his night off. So when he shows up, he's high as a kite, smells like liquor, had to take an Uber to get here because he is way too fucked up to drive right now. Uh, uh so it shows up at the park where I assume you told him to go. Or did you want to meet at the Haven? No. No 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 no. We what okay. We are doing this as fast as possible. Alright. I'm literally going to <laughs> He's going to meet me at no, no. We're gonna meet at the Haven. We're gonna. He's gonna. We're gonna. I'm gonna pick him up. Okay. I'm just gonna fling the bones I towards the freaking. God damn it! I knew it. I literally was about no. to say you're gonna dump her fucking bones out of the car, aren't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. No, it's okay. Wow. No. Jared? No. 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 Jared, I shouldn't do that. The the bad thing will happen no matter what. I know. So I'm... just just do what Drew would do. Okay, I'm gonna do what Drew would do. I have to go, obviously. So wow. Uh, yeah, I would probably end up going myself, especially if uh, um, Isvan is incapable of doing so. Uh, and I would literally just put the bag right by the slide or something. All right. So, 
you do have Istvan with you. I think you'd be in the car. Because, yeah, you'd be in the car. Okay, so you tell him, wait in the car as you go to, like, beneath an uh, orange plastic slide. Uh, start moving the sand around. And then you, oh, no, no, boss, I can do that for you. It, it's my job. Totally my job. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Just, just stay there. Mm. Actually... We'll go together. How about that? Hey, where are we going, boss? We're just going over. We're just going to drop this bag off at the park. <laughs> that is it. Hey. Yes, let's go. <laughs> okay. And um, that's what I will do. I'll make sure it gets done. And it's like right there. All right, so you're sort of like maneuvering this bag, uh, and that's when like a beam of light hits oh. your eyes, <laughs> and you hear someone say, "Hey, park's closed. What are you up to?" <sighs> you look up, and it's a guy in the city parks and recreation uniform. Oh Jesus! In a golf court golf cart. Looks like he's going for his walkie-talkie. This is what I'm going to do. I'm literally going to pick up a stick and I go over to Isfahan. Just <laughs> play along. <laughs> and I'm literally going to go up to him and I'm going to be like, Lightning! <laughs> <laughs> Lightning! <laughs> I'm gonna act on LARPing. So, Drew, I'm gonna point out one very important thing, and that all the LARPers you saw were 20s and 30s. You look like a walking corpse. Hey, it's it could be it's makeup. It's all right. So I'm an undead wizard. Okay, that's what I am. I'm an undead wizard. So. What happens is the guy picks up his radio and says, Hey, I got some spooky wool bullshit going down at the park. Looks like a 5150 backup requested. <laughs> hey, what's in the bag? J3 Billion's right. Just fucking run. It's a Renicom. What's he gonna do? Run you down on his fucking underpowered <laughs> golf cart? All right. So <laughs> Someone call the safety patrol. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Jesus> Christ. <laughs> so oh, this is Ranger Joe. I'm sorry. Isvan tries to calm him down and like, <gasps> no, no, it's fine. It's all good. Uh, and so you see him. He's got the radio in one hand. He's reaching for probably a taser in the other one. Like, sir, I'm going to need you to back up, sir. Are you intoxicated? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what would you like to do, Drew? Okay. <laughs> I... I think my Betty would really like you to do something that requires rolling dice for no reason. I, I know. I, I just need to figure out what he's going to do so I can decide what to make him roll. <laughs> Um, uh, Patricia. I am literally gonna be like, oh, he, he's drunk. Honestly, I'm sorry, sir. We'll guy get in out the sack is drunk. Is that what you're saying? What? Who's drunk? The guy in the sack? It's fun. Because it's fun's there. Yeah, uh, it's fun. Is drunk and high. And, so you're selling yeah. out your ghoul. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Just making it easier and easier for me. <laughs> <clears throat> All I'm going to do is I'm just going to take them and we're going to leave. All right. I'm not going to say a single word. I'm going to look super awkward and everything. <laughs> sir, I'm going to need you to stop right there, sir. I, I have reasonable suspicion that there is contraband in that bag of yours. Please let me open the bag. Mm. I will need to inspect it. 
about as reasonable of a reasonable as oh, you, <laughs> you don't. Okay. Patricia's just like, just give it to him. I don't care. China, no, you don't care. Okay. <laughs> Little DNA test. I mean, I'll get home sooner than whatever plan you're doing. Don't you have buddies who are going to get you out of jail? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, okay. He's not wrong. I was going to say, hey, we would have to put it to a vote, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am... Uh, I'm going to try to convince them... Crap, there's really nothing I can do in this situation. <laughs> what are your what are your powers? What are your domains? I don't have anything. Talk more. to dead people. <laughs> That's it. You should have don't you have a couple more dots in other disciplines? All specs and fortitude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but none so, of those are gonna what's work this in this guy's situation. Aura? <laughs> <laughs> what's the Renicop's aura? <laughs> Suspicious. Pure, Pretty much. Pure mortal. <laughs> it's either I eat him. I mean. I'm honestly thinking about it right now. <laughs> I'm going to give him. I'm actually, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try to play it off. Like, yeah, these are. The, I'm going to give him the bag. <laughs> so you're going to give him the bag? No, I'm not going to. I'm honestly, I'm fucking done. I'm just going to. <laughs> oh, it's fun's with me though. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's fun right now. Is uh looking up, uh, at the night sky and singing "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star." <laughs> oh. oh, we're fucked. He thought it was his night off. Ghouls get nights off. Support I mean, labor, Eric. Support that's, labor. That's All probably right. a discussion you want to have with this fun. That'll go fun. Yeah. I'm going to. And our ghouls will unionize. That <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's such a good they campaign. They will eat alive. <laughs> now we so, know what to do with Furio in the future. This is, um... Now... Brother of Mercurio? I'm, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to convince this man that these are props for my LARP, okay? Okay. I'm gonna show him the bag, I'm like, yeah, these are just props for my uh, for my LARP. And if that does not work, I'm gonna eat his ass. All right. You're gonna eat his my ass? My patience is <laughs> You're gonna eat his thin. ass? Apparently you gonna... that's the aim for tonight. Are you gonna ask for consent <laughs> right. first? It's short discretion is advised. Did you just say you are going to eat his ass? Oh my God, really guys, come on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah really. So. <laughs> Sharon, please give me a manipulation plus a leadership check. There it is, Betty. What are we doing? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, hey, god. It's a botch. <laughs> you guys all suck. All you right, I'm gonna have to eat him. So he's trying to convince him it's for a LARP. And he says, aren't you a little old? Roasting us in chat. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Permit term eating. Oh man, man. Oh my god. had to permit the term eat his ass. Oh my god. So, you try and convince the park ranger that you hear for a LARP. He's like, aren't you a little old to be doing that? Man. Uh, uh, also, yeah, aren't you? Uh, like, don't there's you a have lot a of things permit? that you could do that that you do that you never outgrow. All right, where's your permit? I didn't know I needed a permit. Sir, hand the bag over, sir. I hand it over and I'm going to leave. <laughs> okay. So, just to clarify, you you hand him the bag. No, I'm just gonna Patricia's hand him the body. Bag. With with the, so you hand him the the bag full of human bones. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna. Yep. 
just I'm going with it. All right. How many dots of fortitude do you have? One. Okay. All right. Uh, please make me a stamina check, and you may add the uh, one dice for your dot of fortitude. Stamina plus my fortitude? Yes. I'm going to spend a willpower. Uh, I do not believe you can spend willpower on soak rolls. That's dumb. Correct. Mm. Oof. Ooh, that's zero. <laughs> okay. That's not, that's not just a zero, my friend. That's a botch. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Guys. Nice no, no, no. it is just zero. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. He's not a botch. Can I spend okay. the willpower to make it a botch? Because that'd be so funny. No. Uh, you, could, you can spend money in oh. the Love Your Rebellion fundraiser. Oh, I'm saving up. Oh. I'm never mind. Spank my but, uh, Wait, I, I support Harry? Love Wait, Your what, Rebellion Harry? at the same time I am saving money. Wait, what? So it looks like uh, Spank My Betty has decided to take mercy upon you. Thank you, Spank My Betty. <laughs> So, you feel the two tines of the taser hit you, and you feel them discharge, uh, but all of the, the electricity grounds out, and you take no damage. Does it hurt me at all? Uh, no, because uh, thanks okay. to Spank My Betty, you succeeded at your soul Thank roll. You. Thank you, Spank Science. My Betty. Um... <laughs> Yes, everyone at home, to avoid being tased, just remain grounded. <laughs> or, you know, or you wish you didn't this know. is how it affects a dead body who's no, no. animated by dark canine magic. Okay, wouldn't a dead body spaz out similarly? Like, It's the canine magic. <laughs> canine magic. I like it. I've never tased a dead body, so I wouldn't know. Okay. Uh, tase a vampire and get back to us on what that's like. <laughs> okay. I've so, been tased. I am going to. It was planned. It was not. I was not doing a crime, and God. <laughs> it was Would part it be of a difficult thing? for it was part of a course. Obviously, Isfahan is like super, super high. Correct. Yes, but he will reasonably obey orders given to him. <clears throat> Just don't ask him to drive. Okay. It's either eat him or run. Mm. Why not both? Because I know so, how this is going to affect me in the future. I hate to eat and run. What? I hate God to eat and run. Ever. Yeah. So oh, I what he caught that. Dine and dash. You have handed him the body. You can probably get away from him. He doesn't look like he's in the best physical condition. Okay. He's got a golf cart. You drove here. That then I'm going to run. I'm not. I'm not going to kill him if I don't have to. I don't want to bring another loose end up. <laughs> okay, another dead so... bodied missing person that we have to deal with later on in the future. So, all right. Yeah. So this was just a Parks and Rec guy. Uh, just the taser. Uh, he tries to pepper spray you, but fuck if you care. You don't have to breathe. Uh. You manage to get into the car with Istvan, peel out of the park parking lot, uh, and you show up at the Haven right at dawn. And I think this is where we're going to call our mid-game break. All right, stick around, everybody. We will be back at approximately 10.45 Eastern Time.
to Starlight and Smoke. Uh, so, Drew has committed a number of crimes. Uh, shows up at the Haven uh, right as the dawn sun is rising. So, y'all are gonna have to put a pin in this as day sleep takes over. So, everyone, go ahead and mark off one blood point off your sheet. Okay. And, uh, yeah, some of you wake up a little sooner or later than others. Uh, is there anything that, uh, our high humanity vampires want to accomplish in this brief window of time? Or, you know, low humanity with a sufficient expenditure of willpower. Anyone high have high humanity still? I think oh. most of our sevens and eights are gone. Still got one. Uh... Three, four, five. I still have seven. I need to start asking for more checks. <clears throat> I'm gonna say, Nora, you... not for long. Uh, I have had to make several. Keep making them. I also killed the least amount of people. Yeah, I, so... uh... <laughs> yeah because yeah. you've done worse things to them. <clears throat> You, you do have that new ghoul. I do. I do. So, uh, you wake up. Uh, the news is talking about the possibility that a serial killer has been let loose in Los Angeles after uh, an encounter that a Parks and Recreation officer had last night. Uh, the city is talking about closing down the parks until they can uh, get to the bottom of it. Uh, human remains were discovered. They're being sent to the lab for processing. Oof. God, it sucks to be that guy. Jeez. That was you, I, I, yeah? Yeah, I look over at you and I'm like, hey, Gacy, is your ghost satisfied now? I fucking hope so. Ask. <sighs> Are you satisfied? Yeah, when I get a headstone. Oh my god. Oh, for the so, love of god. um, one of the oh. things that Billy did before everyone woke up, because Billy still has eight humanity, was decorated the entire haven with purple post it notes. Um,. There was also one thing I was going to do before so do, like, I wasn't uh, in the power. Very, very quick on. question for Billy. Do the post-it notes say anything or are they just post-it notes? Like blank post-it notes. They're just blank post-it notes. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to, uh, before, ever, if we're, if I can still do this, I am going to use my willpower to kind of get up before everybody and I will text Nora and I'll say I'd like to speak with you privately so on and so forth so okay uh what is your humanity mine is low <laughs> four Oof. okay uh go ahead and spend two willpower okay uh so Nora has this when she wakes up yeah. Okay. So we have not done any. This is still like our wake up, stretch, get ready. Yep. Moment. Okay. The the sun has just sunk beneath the horizon. <clears throat> um. And uh, you've got a text message from Drew, and the Haven's covered in purple Post-it notes. Then, I, I'll except say, your personal rooms, if that matters, those all have private security. Not that I doubt anyone cares, but if you do, um, it's unlikely Billy got in there without a lot of computer duds. It it will become important at some point, I'm sure. Uh, I will send a message back. Um, 
I'll send a message back to uh, Drew saying, is this private private or you just need to talk to me? Private. Uh, I guess, it, uh, actually I'm going to be, I guess it all depends. <clears throat> it's a hell of a text. <laughs> well, it could go either way. So yeah, I guess private. I'll text private. Okay. Uh, do our morning thing and then we'll have to go somewhere else to talk because this place is not as safe as you think it is yes correct alright so we'll set that up uh, in some way we'll, we'll do you know uh, just through the text just kind of set up like we'll go somewhere a few blocks away um, right that's fine, even if it's like in a dark uh, yeah. alleyway, that's fine as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just because yeah, because uh, Hassam has clued me in specifically to the amount of cameras and listening devices in here. So, if we actually yeah. want a private conversation, we gotta leave. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Hassam would also tell you, don't sit in your cars. Right. Alright, yeah, yes. so... Well, I knew that because, well, yeah, well, my car should still be there with the tracking device in it. Yes, you did not take your car to Malibu. Nope, I have not offered my car up for a job once. <laughs> That's probably smart. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's a couple dark alleyways. Uh, there's a 24-hour diner, very brightly lit. Take your pick. Let's go dark alleyway. Why not? Dark alleyway, 100%. <clears throat> All right. How can I help you? So, well, the thing is, I have a couple things I actually wanted to talk to you about. A couple? Okay. Yeah. Sure. One of them is, I guess, I want to know exactly what you want. I know you say you want power and you want, and the thing is, is our, I, I guess. I noticeably roll my eyes at this. <laughs> Calm down. Really? You couldn't have done this in a more grandiose way like Justinian? No. I'm not gonna, honestly, I think there's thinking too small in my opinion. They're thinking about how they feel and not what the bigger picture is. Oh, so you're interested in the bigger picture. Yes. I'm thinking about the Sabbat. I'm also thinking about the Anarchs. And granted, I don't know a lot about the Camarilla, but I hear they're assholes. So, that's why I kind of ask you what you want. Because the thing is, is when I was a cop, you were all over the news. Right. All right, I I know for a fact that you you apparently you did a lot of messed up shit, everything from taking orphans to selling coke. So, and then this magically happens, you become a vampire, and I just I don't, I feel like something definitely happened with that. I definitely think you got targeted. And I definitely. I just want to know, how are your feelings toward that? Towards that? Look Drew up and down, kind of sizing him up. <laughs> Taking everything I know about him into consideration. <clears throat> well, it seems like can either choose to believe that I did all of those things or choose to believe that I'm some great victim. Do you think I'm a victim, Drew? No, I just think you're not a woman to be taking orders either. Smart. It's the first smart thing you've said in a couple of days now. Like I said, our interests are, you may not think so, but they are aligned. Oh no. I do think all of our interests are aligned people might not like me because of the way I go about things or because I'm better at playing the game than them 
But I have always said from the beginning that all of our survival lies in trusting each other. And you're not wrong. But I definitely think that trust is a little waning at the moment, considering it's not told me they're having secret meetings without you. I just think that's kind of weird. So everyone's doing what they think that they need to to survive. But well, we'll just leave it at that butt, shall we? This is the way I see it as well, too. The thing is, is you see it and I see it that there's going to be a big war coming or something that's literally going to end all of us. So they Especially say. with the Camarilla. Right. So. There's a lot of forces here. Camarilla, Anarch, these Antirillians that come back and eat us all. There's a lot to take in all at once. And it's a lot to navigate. But yeah. I like that you're thinking in the big picture. I appreciate that you're looking out for me, and I appreciate that you're looking to see how it is that I came to be here. I I can tell that you have my back, and I'll have yours, too. Agreed. And the thing is, is I just want to know when push comes to shove that I can rely on you as well. And the thing is, is they have told me a lot about your clan just in general, and they say they can't be trustworthy, but now granted I am going to watch my back because you are the way you are. But fair doesn't mean there's not a mutual trust there, I guess. I think people say that we're not to be trusted because people fear those who are in charge and who make the decisions. So, Drew, if you see the big picture and you see this group that I've been associated with and you're afraid of what we might do or anything to that nature, I trust that you'll make the right decision so that you don't cross me or Layla. Like I said. Drew, this is a lot more simple than any of them are making it out to be. Play your part, do what you're supposed to, until you have better positioning. There are systems at play. Use the systems. I know. You were a cop. You were a medical examiner. You know process and procedure. You know how to work within the confines of something, but how to manipulate that structure to get you what you need. Right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Perfect. This is no different. It just happens to include blood magic, I guess. And how about this? Just to make sure we have all ends. Of course. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vaniculum cup and I'm going to slice my hand and just bleed into the cup. Uh, do what I know Aura. that this is... Yeah, what yeah. would I know about this action? Uh, well, so it seems like he means well. But with your training, you know that you need at least three canites to do a proper Valdery. Okay. And it's usually something you want to do as a pack. Gotcha. I, I'll, I'll stop him and just say save it for when we get back. Okay. It's time for all of us to finally come together and put this nonsense behind us. And I've got your support for that, right, Drew? Yes, you do. Good. Like you said, until we get better power, we get more power or we get a better position. That's what I'm looking out for. Exactly. And I think the number one thing to always remember is I won't betray you because I'm telling you right now I'm I'm going to do what's best for my survival. And for right now, it's all of you. Okay. Okay, and on that note, uh, you make your way to the Haven. Uh, 
other than the people who sent me the secret messages. Uh, who would like to spend their first uh, half hour, hour awake? Just hanging out? Yeah, I got. Uh, I don't have any okay. steaming to do right now. All right, so really Lauren, hot then... redhead shows up with a Bugatti and walks to my room, knows the code, enters the code, walks in, closes the door. Ah! <laughs> kind of nods at you, Justinian, on her way past. She's supposed to be what here. Called that an offer? Really hot redhead. Who are you? Thick Ukrainian accent. Tatiana, I am here for Sam. Oh, hi. Hello, you must be Billy. Yes, that's correct. Pleased to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. All right. And Billy just looks so just happy. <laughs> okay, so about an hour after sunset, Nora and Drew uh, return to the Haven. I assume making no attempt to disguise. We left together. We're coming back together. No. No. Not at all. I will let that be known. Okay. How would you like to address your fellow canines, Nora? Um, I will make a display of taking out the cup and all of the ritual accoutrements. Um, and once I have everything laid out in the correct way, I will kind of make the the summoning so that everybody comes. Oh, it's magic drink time now? Yes, Billy. Correct. But instead of the normal sermon, I have something else that I want to say if everyone would listen. If you text Sam, he comes out with Tatiana. She has dried blood on her neck, but no wounds. And I have dried blood on my wrists, but no wounds. Nice. We sit down. Yeah, I, I announce to everyone in whatever way. Text, on all call, whatever it happens to be. So, does, does, who, does, is everyone there? Yes. So I've got Billy, Sam, Drew. I'll be there. Just Indians there? Mm -hmm. Dimitri, do you humor me? Or not? Um, yeah. Given recent events, sure. Okay. <clears throat> so, as I said, I am going to forego the normal scripture outside of what it is that I need to say to make this work. Instead, I'm going to talk to all of you. Nora, to everyone else. There is a question of trust and faith in one another, of my loyalties, which I will say right now are to my own survival as each one of yours should be. But I say again, our survival is dependent on each other. We are everyone's best weapons. This cup ensures that, and I look at Justinian, if you think that I am going to betray you, this cup is your best friend because it forces the bond that would make that harder. The more you drink from this and all of us participate, the more we are connected and the less you have to be afraid of each other. The very nature of this group. Yes, Dimitri. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No. How does the cup protect any of us? Protects us by making us connected. That's what it does. For those of you who have not drank, you might not have felt it yet. But the more you drink of each other's blood, the more as a group we come together and do this the more we need each other. Question. Billy. Okay, so if I drink Dimitri's blood, 
I will become a spider vampire. What? That's a good question. How does that even work? <sighs> no, Billy, if you drink my blood, you just die. Oh. It's not that cool. I can't speak for Dimitri, but... I... I don't want to die again. Oh, Nora, when no. Raphael was teaching you about the Valdry, he taught you that it would cleanse, cleanse the yeah. blood of everything. Right. So you probably don't want to drink Dimitri straight from the tap. Right, right. But... Uh, yeah. I cannot speak for Dimitri. I don't know all of his particulars, but... Dimitri, you've out of character. You told us that the person who drank from you exploded, right? Yeah, he died. Okay. Yeah. But Dimitri, you informed us that the person who drank directly from you died. No, he's correct. I have drank from this cup with your blood in it. You might not have drank back, but I've drank your blood and did not die. The cup cleanses. The cup cleans. Whatever it is that we carry. It is not a transfer of powers. It is a building of connection. So, who wants to put all of this bickering bullshit behind us and start working together? I've got Billy. Justinian. I wasn't me raising my hand, but oh, honestly... I do think that we probably should. I'll do it. Put this, um... True. Behind us. By all means. Some? Nothing has changed for me since the beginning, and it's insulting you to ask. Dimitri. Yeah, sure. We're all working towards the same goal. But the goal, of course, is to... survive yes <sighs> to not die again exactly all right so then i will do what the act like the minimum ritual needed to to do the whole thing okay uh so i assume you you do the cut you bleed into the cup pass it around do the blessing yep Okay, go ahead and roll me Charisma plus the cult, please. <sighs> and uh, if anybody wants to uh, give me a sneaky uh, not drink, uh, message me the success on your dex plus stealth roll. Um, yeah, there it is, Betty. There it is. Yes, Betty, it requires a roll. <laughs> and it's real bad if you fuck it up. So, knowing that people have already been kind of hesitant to do this, I am specifically trying to watch as close as possible if everyone's going to actually drink. So, um, all right. Okay. Here it goes. And I would like perception alertness from everybody, please. Um, I got six successes on the Charisma Occult roll. Okay. Perception. Alertness. Spending a willpower. Oh jeez, okay. I got six. six. <laughs> oh damn. Yeah, I got uh yeah, no crits, but it's a six. Alright. Three successes Four. on my perception. Okay. Uh Good for me. So 
Uh, it technically doesn't matter how many successes you rolled on uh, your perception rolls because Spank My Betty uh, has decided that anyone trying to disguise their non-participation crit fails. Spank My Betty, I swear to fucking so, God. <laughs> what happens is Justinian tries to hold the blood underneath his tongue. Uh... I got six successes. <laughs> I rolled so well. So I'm going to say, actually, Justinian, that because you crit failed, you end up involuntarily swallowing because Son the vampiric vitae just tastes so good. <laughs> and the rest of you can pick up on his reluctance, but he does swallow. That should still satisfy Nora because it just looks like a reluctant yes, fine. Billy will reach over and That's pat him on the back really hard. That's how my character chooses to interpret that begrudging acceptance. Okay. Billy interprets it as he was like unable to swallow. <laughs> so thanks, Billy. Uh, I will uh, go ahead and update the relevant character sheets uh, after this game, because it's a lot of rolls and that would slow down play. So, uh, you have Patricia hanging out, heckling Drew, but, you know, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time to DNA test the <laughs> human remains that the park ranger found last night. Um, uh, th that actually, I had a thought, now that we've done all of that and I'll stare a little bit at Justinian, but just be like, I'm trying, man. I'm trying really hard with you. Um, I drank it, didn't I? Yeah. Um, and then I'll say, so about our particular bone situation. And Hassam, I apologize profusely for having to ask this question because it's a little... I guess the word's tacky. But... You're loaded, right? Yes. Tatiana giggles. <sighs> With money, right? Yes. <laughs> Tatiana just giggles more. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. She wants a headstone. Right? Yeah. Yep. How much money can you funnel to someone to chisel a headstone and stick it on a plot by t by tomorrow? Give me an address. Uh, it's got to be in Missouri that my mom could drive to. She knows it's me. That's where she can put flowers. Is it a public graveyard in the United States? It's got to be in Missouri, guys. In so Missouri, it's great. A public so graveyard in the United States, yes. We're all looking at Drew. Right. Because no offense, Drew, but all you've told us is that she wants a headstone, and now we, we know that specifics. And now we know that it's Tell in Missouri. Us. So if exactly we Exactly so where, Drew. Don't be I cryptic. Mean, Write down I'll the take address. The Methodist graveyard. Okay. She wants a Methodist graveyard in Missouri, somewhere what where her town. What? Town. Big state. What, what town? It gives you the name of a real small town in Missouri. You've never heard of it. I look at Tatiana and I say, text Kalen, he can take care of that. He does. Okay. Uh, I will do some actual law uh, for the state of Missouri and actually find a way to legally, like, to cut through this as quick as possible. And just be like, tell your mom to do this, declare it legally dead, this, that, here's your plot, your headstone will be there by then, like, and then, you know, so as to not disturb, you know, and I'm telling you all of this, and so as to not to disturb her, we'll have your bones actually rested in that plot privately. That yeah, okay. Tell the nice judge lady I appreciate all of her suggestions, 
but my mom is not going to declare me legally dead until she gets my body in a box. Thanks at least for not sending me UPS. See, I said thank you. I much appreciate it. But here's the thing. Um, she makes a good point on this. I don't think her mom's going to put her legally dead if she doesn't see a body. That's the problem there. Doesn't need to for the headstone. It'll be up by tomorrow. By the way, hand-carved granite. It's nice. I tell her that, well, you're going to have a headstone whether whether you have both. Would, that, like, would, that, would that act, Drew, would that act as proof of concept that we're willing to follow through on this for us to get the location of Ash? Good point. Would this you act... You know what? I'm already in the system. They're running the DNA tests Little. on my skull right now, so sure. Uh, Ash is in Vancouver. He paid Vancouver. a shimise to change his face. He's up there in the court of Vancouver, has a werewolf lover, whole nine yards. Oh. Okay. I'm going to go to Nora Nassam. He's in Vancouver. Okay. Um, With the shit that right. we just went through, I want a fucking address. Yeah. Do you know exactly where he's at? Do you have an address? Uh, Jesus, hang on. And so she vanishes. <laughs> comes back. It's fucking ghost. <laughs> it's like, yeah, 1313 Puget Sound Drive. Waterstone Towers. Penthouse Apartment. 1313 13 what? Puget Sound Drive. Patent Sound Drive. Thank you. I really appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. You're I'm gonna go racer. nap in my skull now. Okay. Thank you. She go. vanishes. Have a nap. Good. That's done. All we needed to do was figure out where it was at, not do anything about it. Yep. What's left? We go find him, I guess. No, we give that, that wasn't ad- the job. That was not the job. We give that address to your guy that gets that anarch on our side, right? I agree, but on the other hand, I don't, I guess. That's why you're not going to turn it in so he, we don't have another, oh yeah, but I'm changing the deal situation. What I are meant, you talking about? I never left. changed the deal. I know, that wasn't you. I look at Nora. Right. That However, was the wolf. I, uh, what I meant was, what other Anarch checklists do we have still? I believe that's the Uh, the, 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 uh, forget her name, I'm sorry. Vivian. Vivian wants a stockpile of guns, but have I gotten an update on that? Uh, did you ask anyone about guns? I said something else. Uh, yes. Uh, no, that was a fair assumption to make. Okay. Um, but have you put out any other feelers that I might be forgetting? Uh, Not yet. Uh, well, I think there was the third issue, which is the, the third my, vampire. Um, I forget the name right now. My sire's name? Sorry. Layla. Layla. Was there a reason that um, Billy was going to meet with their sire? Uh, they were yes. referenced. Uh, what was it, though? Good. Associated with someone. Crap. Uh, yes, your your sire has sent you a text message saying that she would like to meet with you at your earliest convenience and sends you an address. <gasps> okay. Uh, come alone or not as you wish. Okay. Uh, I <clears throat> will 
in the in the in the spirit of good faith I'm going to step out to go meet Layla alone. Hopefully with an update about how we can handle one of the Anarchs, Vivian specifically. Other than that, the other one was the Hollywood guy. So we still gotta figure out how to make him happy. Uh no, so Hollywood guy is the one with the rogue child. Sorry. Okay, that's right. Uh, so it was Hollywood guy, it was Vivian, and it was, um, the one about magic. Yes, but, uh, you have promised, uh, that person, you have made them enough promises that they are off the list. Okay. So really, it's just, just Vivian, Vivian at this point. Yes. Okay. Give me a little bit, and I... Well, this, this other thing that you told me, is that kind of what that's gonna be? Or? Yeah, that, that is the response you get. Uh, I say, okay, so in regard to Vivian, I have something set up. All we need to do is get her somewhere away from mortals that we know exactly when and where she will be. And then that way we'll be able to make the delivery. Okay. So, while this is going on, uh, Billy, you get that communication from your sire inviting you to meet. Uh, Justinian, did you keep your cell phone? Um, not from when I was alive. Okay. But I have a new phone, like a... Yeah, okay. we got Wait. burners at one point. Did I destroy my cell phone? Yeah, we specifically switched to burners during one of the kill missions. Yeah. I don't remember why, but we did. Me and you, uh, I mean. Be because Drew's wife kept texting him. Oh, oh. yeah! Alright, so you do not get the text message from your handler. Uh, who has police contacts? I do. I have one. Well, it's okay. Marshall's not police. I do. Okay, and Dimitri, you also have a dot of police contacts? All right. No, so... I have the panders. They have contacts with the police, if you recall. Okay. So, Drew, you receive uh, an APB for Justinian. Uh, missing, presumed dangerous. Uh, Dimitri, you get a text message from your pander buddies like, Hey, doesn't this guy belong to you? with the same information. Oh, Justinian. Fuck. We have a problem, buddy. What would that be? I'm gonna show, I'm gonna turn my phone around. I think this is you. What? Oh. Huh? They, we, you're, like, want, you're a wanted man. Didn't we make them think I was dead? Son of a bitch. Mm. Well, that's happening. I would ask Nora. So, what is the status on the guns? Um. Status on the guns. Uh, talking. I'll talk to Hassam alone uh, in regard to this. Status on the guns is that um, we are going to set up a meet with Vivian alone, so that it can be taken care of. Try to kill this bitch. She's getting a delivery of weapons. Uh -huh. Alright then. Secretly, I kind of respect that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so which would you like to pursue? At some point um, during all these random separate things, Billy will go up to Dimitri and tug on his sleeve and be like, Hi, oh, I need a ride. Up, oh, 
Okay. Let's jump in the car. Let's go for a ride. Is it okay if we go for a ride? Yes, um, I need to meet my sire. Oh, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Hmm. I'm not giving you the keys to my Bugatti if I'm not in it. <laughs> You're gonna have to it's borrow okay. Nori's car. I, I will take I will take the D and D guys Toyota Corolla. Right? Uh, oh no, was that was dumb. That was ditched. Yeah, you ditched yeah. that one. Oh, I like that uh, Corolla. Okay, uh, what else we have? The rent a cop saw the license plate. Nora has a car. That's it. Oh, okay. Nora, can we borrow your car? No. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I didn't think you would agree to it anyway. I but I had mine. to ask. Thank no. you. You know that whole trust thing. By the way, uh, what are we going to do about him? And he points to Justinian. So someone yeah, recognize you? Know what? That's, I should. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say anything. I'll let you deal with that. I'll. And Billy and I can go catch a ride. Oh. Here, I hand you uh, one of those green dot debit cards. Get an Uber Deluxe. Oh, fancy. Well, thank Thanks, you, boss. Sam. You're welcome, Billy. Do you want to come? Unless Nora needs me to deal with this Justinian shit, yeah. These days, it seems wise to go in numbers. Three and three is good. So, Justinian, you're... You got recognized? There's an APB out for him. APB. Oh, the, right here. He's a wanted man. Armed and extremely dangerous, apparently. Apparently. Oh, so what? We're all armed and dangerous, right? Yeah, but cops don't know that about most of us. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, and, and Justinian, you know, it's not really the cops you have to worry about. It's your old buddies who are going to see this and know where you are. Hey, know where that I'm at the uh, Haven? The people, no, no, the people from your mortal life that you were in yeah, witness protection hiding from. This is the, that's the issue. I mean, oh, yeah, they'll know the county. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> This is not a. This is not a good. Uh, not a good thing at all. It's okay, Justinian. Don't worry. Through here, he's got a good ghoul. He'll uh, he'll kill some asshole, and then he'll make him look like you. No. And that'll be no, it. No, you know, no, it's no. like zip so, zap zoom. It's over. No. So Justinian, uh, I'm sorry, not Justinian. Istvan, uh, slept off his hangover. Uh, woke up probably just about an hour before uh, the rest of you started waking up. He's currently on a couch playing on a Nintendo Switch, and he's like, Oh no, boss, I can't do anything with federal agencies. Nobody can. I know. You aren't going to do anything anyways. <sighs> hey, I'm working on digging up that one person you asked me to dig up. Hey, you did a good job, too. I think you're you're doing an A-plus job. Wait, so, I, I'm a, I, I apologize. I got a little lawsuit. Dimitri and Billy, you're doing what? We're driving to meet her. Uh, sorry, yeah, it's the, their, say, their uh, sire. Okay. Yeah, it's Billy, Hassam, and Dimitri. It's Billy's side mission. Basically. Gotcha. We're yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just, we're just back up. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's turn the camera to Billy, Dimitri, and Sam for the moment. Uh, so, you get the Uber Deluxe. It's not that far. It leads you a little further into the warehouse district. Uh, and you come across what looks like the group haven for Joe's kids, where the rest of them live communally. Like, you are all living communally. And so, uh, when you show up, uh, so Billy gets out of the car first, and they're like, oh, hey, we've been waiting for you. And then Dimitri gets out, I'm like, oh, how, man, how have you been? How's the blood been treating you? Incognito, you know? Oh, yeah, well, come on, come on, come on. Inside, inside. <laughs> yeah, and like, just to see him, they're like, sup. 
I give them uh, toxic masculine fist bumps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that's about where they're at with Sam. So that's good. So, uh, so they bring Dimitri into like what looks like, uh, you know, they're trying. It's a whole bunch of secondhand furniture and a TV that like. It mostly works, but there's a couple dead pixels here and there. Um, you know, they're fighting over the remote control, like, all the time. Uh, a couple like just passed out mortals on some bean bags and, like, inflatable furniture in the corner. It very much looks like uh, these people live a lot from dumpster diving. It's all secondhand, all repurposed. Uh, and so they want to sit you down on the bean bags and like blow up purple plastic couches. Be like, hey man, so how's the blood treating you? Like, have you figured anything else out? Have, like, have you had any visions? Sometimes, sometimes people like you they get visions. Has, has that been going on? No, I sleep pretty good. I don't have uh, any problems with that. Um, I'll tell you what I did have problems with. You ever heard of those Hollywood assholes? Oh Big no! Ugly bastards. Yeah, Hollywood Forever. They fucking hate you, man. Yeah, I don't get it, but yeah, they came after me. Um, no, ha- do you not know why they hate you? No, it's oh, they- sure I do. Yeah, but fuck them, right? No, it's because their fucking pack leader died trying to embrace you. You just like, yeah, what was what was up with that? Like that was really weird. I don't know. But uh, anyway, they took a couple of shots at these, but they, they're, they're not uh, amateurs. They took care of themselves. They scared them off. But I think they might try to do it again, you know? All right, what so one you... of them, like, reaches for your hand. And it's like, okay, well, do you, do you mind? And, like, looks like they're about to, like, puncture your wrist. Oh, don't do that. And start to drink your that. blood. No, 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 So, no, no, no. what happens then is the ductus interferes and you get a very spirited discussion on you can't do that it will blood bond you and that is wrong yeah but it's fine we'll just voldery right after and that will get rid of it no you just can't willingly blood bond and so it's just a very deep philosophical conversation <laughs> that's gonna go round and round and round so billy which one's your sire this could take a while <laughs> Oh yeah, she's upstairs. Anyway, it says very clearly in the book of God. We're just gonna, we're gonna, and then we leave. Good luck, Andrew. <laughs> Help me, please. <laughs> All right. So you go up a couple flights of stairs to the rooftop of this warehouse. It's three stories tall, so you're on like essentially what would be the fourth floor. Uh, it is the first thing that happens when you open the door is it smells beautiful and you open the door and it's just tremendous scent of night blooming jasmine and there is a very carefully cultivated rooftop garden here this is and nice. So, yeah, it is. Is this like it's a lot nicer than the haphazard stuff you saw downstairs? Like effort has gone into this, uh, and so you do see what looks like uh, you know those like fake Greek statues that you can get at garden stores. Oh yeah, yeah. So there's one of those statues of a woman pouring out. A, an amphora and that seems to be the centerpiece of all this whole garden uh, and Sam especially will pick up like oh that's belladonna oh that's fox oh poison 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 yeah that's so Rick I could show her yeah and so uh Give me an intelligence plus a cult roll, Sam. This beautiful place. Oh. That one doesn't come up much. What's the difficulty? Six. 
Normal. Okay. They all rolled successes, and two of them are ten, so seven. Wow. Okay. Uh, you remember your sire telling you, uh, yeah, and if anybody ever wants to meet with you in a garden, they probably worship Lilith. And because you rolled so well, uh, you know a couple interesting facts about Lilith. Uh, I will let you choose, because you know the setting very well. Okay. Uh. So, Billy, your sire is there, uh, just sort of tending the garden, looks up when you and Sam are like, oh, I'm so glad. And is this one of your pack mates? Yes, this is Hosa. I am. I'm so glad you decided to come meet me. Come, uh, do you need anything for the night? Oh no, thank you. This, this place is beautiful. Oh, thank you. I, I spend quite a lot of my time up here and, well, that's actually a lot what I wanted to talk to you about. It's a little unorthodox for me to be speaking to you like this without you having gone through your complete creation rites, but I also would not necessarily feel right letting you go through it uh, without knowing everything. I'm, I'm sure you've heard by now the uh, party line, so to speak, that uh, Cain, Father of all vampires, the one we must listen to, Yes? Oh, yes. Praise Cain. Yes, praise Cain indeed. Uh, and I do want to make it very, very clear. I do, do believe that Cain is the father of all vampires, and we must listen to him and use his wisdom to guide our nightly on lives. But did you know, have you been taught that Cain had a teacher? No. Who? Her name was Lilith. And so, you will not hear much of her. Uh, unfortunately, the people like me who follow her path, uh, well, toxic masculinity, what else is there to say? Apologies, sir. Nothing to fear from me. Cain is the father of us all, but Cain is not the only one of our kind with power from ancient days. Oh, oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, but the, the question is wisdom. And I would like to teach you the wisdom of Cain's own teacher. I would like that. Excellent. Leave one of your tenants is embracing pain because it makes you stronger, yes? That's one of them, yes. We're going to get along also, very well, Billy. Experiential, also. Uh, pain is a teacher, not because it makes you stronger, necessarily, but because... Stronger, wiser. There are things wiser. we learned within pain. Exactly. So, have you enjoyed much about your life as uh, one of the canines? It's okay. It's not the best. It's, it's not bad, but not good. Well, I believe that it is my role as your sire find those who are like you, who, who feel that way about your existence, teach you something. So, I would like you to hurt someone. Who? And it won't be for me, it will be for you. You don't have to kill them. You don't even have to make them bleed. But that is their first lesson. Oh. So, who 
do I hurt? Macabre Derek? Whoever you want. Gonna get real real now. I'll stand (laughs) up, reach in my jacket, hand you a K-bar and a set of brass knuckles. Get on my knees in front of you and say, only through pain are we reborn. Only through death can we transcend. Don't be afraid, Billy. Oh, out of character, that was totally a a reference um, to our raiders who just raided the (laughs) stream with 13 viewers. Thank you, thank you, Macabre Derek. Also, 13 is a magic number. That's why Billy signed. So, who do I hurt? (laughs) Macabre Derek. Oh, I see. Hello, thank you, Macabre Derek. Thank you for the raid. We're doing some uh, canine shenanigans. They're in a garden. For no particular reason at all. Oh, there's a reason. <laughs> so, uh, Sam isn't Sam. kidding either. We might follow different paths, but they have the same teachings most of the way. Yeah, so Sam, when you say that, you see something sort of click in the elder vampire's head? Like, oh, okay. Figured something out. She doesn't say anything about it, though. I give her a knowing smile, though. Like, we share a secret. She'll return that smile. Hosam, you want pain. I give pain. And we both learn. We both become wiser. And in so, that moment, I look the most inhuman I ever have to you, probably. There's nothing human in that expression. I learned not to hurt friends, but if hurting you helps us both learn, That's it's correct. not bad. That's correct. So maybe that's the lesson you'll learn how to redefine what a friend is for you. Oh, so I'm a better friend with helping hurt you? Yes, and I'm a better friend for helping you learn what it is to hurt and why. Nora is always talking to us about surviving. To survive, you must shun what you used to think mattered, your old values, and embrace new ones. Okay, I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. And, and Billy just looks very pensive for a moment they're kind of having to think about what they've been taught and then how to reframe it to fit this new concept. Um, So they're actually kind of fitting those pieces together and it begins to make sense to them. You know, if you, even though you're hurting your friend, you're helping them learn through pain, which is what is part of his path. And then if Billy wants to learn from Devil's Luck Gaming, who just raided with a party of 45. <laughs> Hello, Devil's Luck Gaming. Woo. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Hello, hello. Jesus. You guys are just in time to watch a new vampire take their first steps away from humanity. Yeah. Yep. And into uh, and- something greater. <laughs> they are meeting in a garden. <gasps> so, so awesome. Billy will look at Hosam again and go, You, you are sure you want me to hurt you? Yes. And if you're going to learn the first lesson properly, don't hold back. I do look at the sire and say, perhaps sustenance for after, though, might be nice. She 
just nods, doesn't say anything. She's very intently watching this exchange between the two of you. Okay. You're my friend. And I'm going to be a better friend and hurt you. And Billy I say will... you are correct and give you the most inhuman smile I've ever given you. This doesn't phase Billy, your smile, unless the storyteller it wants it to. It should make you happy. <laughs> That's what I'm going for anyways. Okay. Billy's not so great at body language anyway, so... <laughs> Expressions. <laughs> so, Billy, do you hit Sam once or twice? Or do you just let your beast run rampant and kick the shit out of him? Billy has a preference for odd numbers, so Billy would probably go for 13. Exactly what I was thinking. I love it. Okay. Thanks for the follows. Indeed. Thank you so much for the follows. So, go ahead and give me a conscience roll. Uh, you can, if you want, willingly relent to this and give up some humanity. Um, I will leave it to fate. Okay. Okay, so two fives, an eight, and a ten. Okay, so you get three hits in and you see the skin start to break uh, where you just really get Sam good with the K-Bar and you see a little bit of blood start to ooze and you feel really really bad nope, 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 no, nope. He's not. Oh, I no. bet he made that humanity roll botch okay <laughs> oh shit Retconning fate has decided that. for you you feel amazing. Oh, no. <laughs> I resist none of it and laugh the whole time. Okay, for so... Those, for those watching very quickly, we are doing a, a charity this month um, where for a certain amount of donation that goes to Love Your Rebellion, check them out, um, empowering marginalized groups with the arts. For certain um, donations, you can affect roles such as botches and successes and chaos roles. So, that is a cash in of one of those donations. Automatic botch. Oh boy. Yep. Check out that link, it's pretty fun. Yes. I'm gonna dye my hair purple soon. Speaking yes. of which, everything about Key's picture is amazing. Carry on. All in right, our Discord so... to see purple hair. So, because you have botched, you lose a humanity. Oof. Uh, you also lose a dot of conscience, and you gain a derangement. But this is what you want. And the derangement that you gain no. is sadism. You can regain willpower by willingly hurting other people. Oh, <laughs> and if this. you get low on willpower, you feel a complete Ocean to hurt other people. Oh, oh geez. Oh. Billy got this? That's a great Billy got this. Oh, Billy got this? <laughs> I think this nuts. is the greatest thing ever. Agreed. Oh, Agreed. sweet, innocent Billy. Oh, yeah, innocent, right. Yeah, not innocent no more. The How many only... times has Billy said, kill them all in this game so the, far? The only good <laughs> vampire, according to Dimitri. Good, right. Uh, Eric hey, brings up in... a great question in the Discord, though. Rachel, does the Valdery convey what the pack is feeling physically? Because <laughs> some of them might be that high now. I don't know. Yes. So, all right. So, what I'm going to say is it is not strong enough for anybody who is not here. So, basically, anybody not Billy or Sam to pick up anything that they're feeling right now. Once that gets higher, absolutely. But right Got now, it. nobody's really going to be higher than a three. But does that Billy, mean Dimitri can feel this? 
Dimitri probably feels like a little bit of a tingle. Um, you know what? I'm going to get back to you on that, Dimitri. Um, uh, go ahead and make me a willpower roll. Uh, and remember the result. Uh, Billy, you definitely feel uh, the pain that uh, Sam is going through right now. But with your new derangement, you like it. The, the thing that may make this worse in the long term for this relationship is even if you're bad at expressions, it would be obvious. So do I. You're a sadist. I'm a masochist. Oh, boy. Oh, God. This is this relationship has just gotten <laughs> weird. <laughs> this is not healthy BDSM, no. Not at all. Oh, my Lord. Wow. <laughs> all right. So, Dimitri, how many successes did you get? Holy sweet Jesus, Eric. Okay. <laughs> all right. It's the best so... thing I've ever seen. Holy wow. wow. For, for the audience, that, Eric that... got 10 successes on that roll. Jesus. Jesus. That's amazing. What? That's a crit success. Low power. <laughs> wow. So... What happens downstairs, Dimitri, is that uh, essentially all of your sires are discussing on if one of them should taste your blood and thereby submit to the blood bond to figure out, you know, what would have happened to Ambrose. And you know what will happen if they try. Or, you know, you're not exactly sure what would happen now that you're a vampire, but you suspect. But you feel this brief momentary urge of yes let them drink hurt them <laughs> that's so good kids. <laughs> but yeah but you think no they're just kids and with that 10 successes you can pretty much shape the scene to go however you would like nah I won't let them drink I'm like no 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 it is. This is too dangerous. Okay. It's too bad things. Believe me, I have seen this. And you see that guy, you know that guy that you sent me the APB on? That guy is a cannibal. He's a fucking cannibal. Like, what do you want? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, oh, shit, who did he eat? I don't know. <laughs> and so, they all, like, they all get real awkward about that real fast. Because they have very <laughs> conflicted viewpoints on Diablery. I'm sure. Oh, jeez. And about now is when uh, a very spry Billy and very damaged Sam come down. Oh, and um, I'm sorry, rewind a little bit. So, Billy, while you are just, like, kicking the blood out of Sam, your sire is just watching she's smiling like the way a teacher smiles when you turn in an A-plus paper and when you're done you know like your uh, fists are all sort of bruised uh, covered in Sam's Vitae good now go do that to someone who doesn't want you to hurt them and come back and tell me all about it um Hmm. Will I help them learn too? Yes. If you do it right. How? But How do I do you... it right? Make sure that pain has a lesson. A small child reaches out, touches the stove, hurts themselves. They know never to do it again. But if their parent just hit their hand for no reason, they would learn nothing. I can help so many people now. Yes, you can. Apologies That's... to all the players. Oh, God. <laughs> but I look at Billy and say, you can especially help our new family when they stop doing the right thing for us as a family. 
And the best part is, Billy, the higher your vinculum gets, the more you're going to want to be their teacher. Justinian, Drew, and Dimitri, they might need to learn lessons. You can help. That's what I'm telling you on the way down the stairs. And that is when you encounter Dimitri, who is just sort of stymied the rest of the other pack. You you see Billy, you know, obviously, normally they wear beige, but this beige is covered in dark wine red. Um, and they're just, they're so excited that they're, they're stimming very happily. They're just, they're just so excited and bouncy and just kind of pressing their, their head against, uh, Hosam's shoulder. Just, mm. Dimitri stands up seeing them soaked in blood. Are you okay? What happened? Sam's wounds are healing while you watch, but there's like spitting out teeth while they regrow giant cuts oh, but what his the face fuck happened to you his face looks like that afterglow of the rave when you got really high and danced hard or that sex afterglow maybe that's what he looks like and this uh, we learned like how to a, survive and this seems like a really good point to close this session out Wow. So, thank you all for playing. Thank you all to our audience, subscribers, and Patreons on Patreon. Your support is what inspires us to aim higher with our cosplay and deeper with our roleplay. We will be back here, same time next week, showcasing even more goth punk horror and vampiric violence. If you, don't wanna... if you don't want to wait that long, catch more thrilling vocal content over the week as we play at least one and sometimes two games every day. That includes Insurgents on Tuesdays, Followed on Wednesdays, and the uh, culmination of our Alien Chronicle on Thursdays. You can also catch Werewolf the Apocalypse, uh, along with our continuing Unknown Armies, Unknown Armies Chronicles. And as always, check out our schedule on Twitter, Instagram, and VorpalTales.com. And don't forget to check out Love Your Rebellion. Our fundraiser will be running for the rest of the month, and our next milestone will be some chill, cozy gaming with Dixie. Uh, and so, and I think, uh, Ever, you also wanted to highlight the month? Oh, yes. I, I was not, but now I am. Uh, so, this month is actually Disability Awareness Month. Disability Pride Month. So, that basically is the... It's the 25th anniversary of when the ADA was signed. And for anyone who knows, it's really important, especially if you've seen the first few episodes of Vampire, you will remember that Billy is autistic and hard of hearing. So the entire crew had to figure out they have to speak on Billy's right side where their good ear is. Um, they have to pay attention to how they're facing Billy and whatnot because very commonly, um, it's assumed that people who are deaf or hard of hearing are lip readers, and that is not the case. So they had to figure out how to adapt and speak with Billy, and some of Billy's powers help with that. But in real life, deaf people are not uh, are not vampires that can have that. So please, oh please, oh please, try to be inclusive in the games that you play and the things that you do for people with disabilities. Uh, also, like myself, I am on the autism spectrum, so months like this are super important to help um, point out the inadequacies maybe in how you do inclusion. So it's a good time to take a look at that and see how you can improve. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say to everybody, since I've been signing the whole time, happy disability months yeah and uh go check out misty vander everyone that's m-y-s-t-y v-a-n-d-e-r uh she does a series of sign language videos for role-playing games in specific so if you ever wanted to learn how to sign a beholder or perception check uh she's got you covered it's a real great way to 
sort of be able to create space for other people. That is so cool. Yeah. So, for now, uh, so thank you so much for that, Ever. Uh, and for now, the sun rises and day sleep sets in. Please tell our audience when they can next see your wonderful faces on the internet. Hey there, uh, my name is Eric. You can find me online at Maroon Recluse, and uh, I will be here tomorrow for They Came From Beyond the Grave. Oh, it's me again. Um, <laughs> hey everybody, I have enjoyed playing Billy for you. You can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever and on Etsy at Meet and Co Designs. And that is because I am Ever, and that makes me two large encyclopedias and a very, 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 very small Spanglish translation book in a trench coat. Hi, I'm Harry. You can find me uh, everywhere as the Sleepy Cat. Uh, yeah. Fuck. Uh, Saratoga by Night, come in late July. Find me on Wednesday uh, with Vorpal Tales playing Fallout, and on Thursday with Rachel playing Changeling, where shit's gone funky, and we're trying to unfunky it. Hello, uh, my name is Jared. You can find me at the Real Life Jared on Twitter and all that good stuff. Um, and the next time you can find me is going to be, I'm the Sunday guy, so you'll find me uh, every Sunday night here uh, playing Vampire, so, yeah. Uh, before I tell you who I am and where you can find me, I do want to take a second to thank uh, the people who followed us after the raid, Fencer Dan, Easy Payments, uh, The Pale Dragon, and uh, Chameleon. I did not want to interrupt the amazing scene that Billy was having uh, or any of the important information at the end that we talked about, uh, but your follow is greatly appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all the Raiders who are watching and for those who followed, we appreciate it. Uh, my name uh, is Steve. Um, my pronouns are he, him. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Uh, tonight I played Nora, whose pronouns were she, her. Uh, the next time you will find me on Vorpal Tales will be tomorrow, where I will be running a chaos filled. They came from beyond the grave. Our researchers and investigators are s still trying to get out of Scotland, um, but there are some sea monsters that are currently stopping them. I'm Tyler. Other check was online. I'm very happy to be taking this journey with Billy. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm in a lot of things with Vorpal Tales, but I'll point you to next Thursday when we begin Star Trek Adventures, the voyages of the USS Dauntless. You're going to want to check that out. Awesome. So, as the dawn sun rises and we slip into Torpor, those of us with willpower to push through can award votes. All votes award our cast members bonus willpower, which they will surely need to survive in the coming nights. So, in the normal order, Please cast your votes. Well, everybody was awesome, but I gotta give it to uh, Steve for the, uh, the, the, I guess that was Furio that you were channeling oh. in, uh, during the park chase. Yeah, yeah, my head cannon. The profanity is that, rant was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, my head cannon is that Furio was taking a vacation from his jobs in Chicago and got hooked up with those LARPers and then that happened. Oh my god. Love it. Thank you. Oh, God, this is so hard. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so... I... Steve, I was gonna give it to you for the amazing Furioness, but after that scene with Tyler, I need a cigarette, and I don't even smoke. <laughs> so, Tyler, take, take, take my points. And get out of here. Go on, get. It's you, Harry. Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, uh, this has left me, uh... <laughs> uh, ever. I gotta give that to you. Uh, especially for that last scene. Holy shit. I think we might have a new... A new problem in the uh, coterie here. <laughs> um... Oh, boy. Fucking hell. Not good at all. It'll be fine. You say that. You'll be okay as long as you learn your lesson. 
Mm. You know that I'm very bad at doing that. <laughs> in fact, one of the key things, the running themes in all my characters is that they are all terrible at that. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. And uh, I gotta give my vote to uh, Hassam for um, honestly playing a guy that really loves pain. Thought he did a very good job on that. It's kind of hard to do that. Um, I will say that honorable mention is obviously ever for terms of just most in character and awesome and game changing scenes that is top tier stuff that was amazing glad i got to watch that scene play out however um for sheer side splitting hilariousness and <laughs> making me literally cry at the comedy of errors that took place <laughs> Jared, have my vote. That was amazing. You're welcome. I, I love you and thank you for everything. I, <laughs> I know. That was rough. <laughs> I'm still laughing at that whole thing. Hey, it worked, didn't it? I didn't kill a guy. I didn't kill him. Good job. <laughs> Ever, you get mine because I'm sure Rachel felt this too. Every one of you here is an awesome role player. But now two of us are finally playing the spot. Shit. Now we're getting somewhere. Excellent. Thank you for that. Thank you for all of your wonderful role play. You are fantastic gamers to run for. To our audience, thank you for the votes. Uh, do hang out for a couple more minutes because we are about to raid the Bard's Playhouse. They are playing Under the Sea for Chasper's Game Day, which is a really great D&D uh, &D collective uh, intending to fight suicide and self-harm. So stick with us as we go visit them. Good night. <laughs>